City Hall. I'd like to call this Tampa City Council meeting to order. At this time, I yield to <coughs> Council Member Clendenin uh, for a moment of silence. Good morning, everybody. If everybody could stand and join us in a moment of silence. And now for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right, roll call, please. Carlson. Here. Hertak. Here. Clendenin. Here. Henderson. Present. Vieira. Miranda and Maniscalco. Here. We have a physical form. All right, may I have a motion to adopt the so, minutes from February 15th and February 2024 uh, and February 29th. We have a motion from Council Member Henderson. Do we have a second? Second, second from Council Member Clendenin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, I'm going to go through some housekeeping. At this time, I'd like to recognize the purchasing department as March is purchasing month in the city and ask them to please stand and be recognized. I know we have some members in the back. Thank you very much for being here. All right, I have a memo from Councilmember Vieira stating that he will need to depart today no later than 6 p.m. We can put that in the record. I have the, um, the memo here. We have a memo received from Councilmember Carlson requesting that item number 48 be pulled for discussion. We will hear item number 48 first under staff reports. Is that correct, Councilman Carlson? Whatever order you want, just okay. Thank you. All right, we have a memo received from Councilmember Henderson requesting item number 88 be heard first after public comment. However, it'll be heard first after items, uh, item number six because motions were made at the February 15th meeting for item number five and six to be heard first after public comment. And then we will go to yours. Um, we spoke with uh, Mr. Tony Mulkey of Parks and Rec. He said they'll need 10 minutes for that presentation for 88, and then we'll give five minutes to each council member to speak. All right, we have a memo received from Mr. Martin Shelby requesting item number 99 be continued to March 28th. Is that correct, sir? Yes, Mr. Chairman, uh, Martin Shelby, City Council Attorney. Also, I'm going to ask item number 98, which is also related to the rules to travel with this. And one other thing I'd just like to mention with regard to this request for a continuance, I chose the date of uh, the 28th of March, but I understand that's a very full agenda, and I just want Council to be clear that uh, I am going to be bringing back some uh, suggestions, um, some recommendations, and uh, it is best for a council, a full council, to be partaking of it because I suspect that part of the process will be a series of motions that will need to be made. So I just want to let council know in advance that I'm going to be requesting that this be heard uh, with a full council. How about April 4th instead? If that's council's right. pleasure, that would be fine. May if that's okay with the maker of the motion, is that okay? The maker of the motion is okay with Thank All right, you. so we have a motion to continue item number 99 to April 4th and under staff report. I'm sorry? And 98 as well. Motion for 98 and 99 to be continued to April 4th. All right, we have a motion from Council Member uh, okay. Henderson, second from Council Member Miranda. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you, All right, Council. we have a memo received from Council Member Hertak that item 101 be continued to March 28th. Is that correct? Uh, correct. We have uh, quite a few things that still need to be settled calendar wise um, that. Multiple things have been brought to my attention, so we would like to continue that just so we can settle all some calendar issues. So right. if anybody else has calendar issues, now's the time. Or the next yeah. three months, or next wow, three weeks will be the time. So we have a motion to continue from Councilmember Hertex, mm -hmm. Councilmember Clendenin, all in favor? Aye. 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 We have a memo received from Councilmember Carlson requesting item 13, 29, 31, and 33 be pulled for separate votes. So we will get so to moved. those. What? You don't need a motion, okay. but 13. when we get to them, 13, 29, 31, and 33 will be separate votes. They are consent agenda items. Uh, right. uh, Mr. Carlson, if I can just ask, I believe number 13 has another item attached to it, item 14. Did you want a separate yeah, vote on item 14 yeah. as well? All right, let's do 13, 14, 29, sure. 31 and 33. All right, no motion needed. We'll get to that when we get to that. Uh, item number 89 and 90 are gonna be heard together. All right, um, I'm gonna go through the staff reports. The staff will be in person for item number uh, 93. 
Uh, all right, we have a motion from Mr. Stephen Benson uh, to continue items 102 and 103 Mr. to Chair. May 2nd. Yes? Yeah, I would like to uh, make a motion along those lines to move item number 102 to May 2nd per staff's recommendation or request. And 103 as well? And then can I, I'll say up 103 in a second. All right, so we have a motion to continue 102 to May 2nd. We have a second from Council Member Clendenin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. What do you? 103. Um, we've been going around and around about this. I want to meet with staff and then and then propose later to bring this back on the agenda. And so I would just like it to be taken off at this point. All right, motion to remove item 103 from the agenda by Council Member Cross and second Council Member Clendenin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, item number 104. I have a, a memo received from Javier Marin. Uh, to continue this item to May 16th. So all right, we have a motion from Councilmember Vieira, second from Councilmember Clendenin. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, let me just go through the staff reports real quick. Chief Bennett, is there an administration update? No, sir. No, sir. Mm -hmm. All right. Uh, item number 88, would you like staff present, Mr. Baird? Yeah, that's the, that's the part. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah, 88 is being moved up. 89 and 90 are going to be heard together. That's a yes. Uh, item number 91, would you like staff present? Yes. Okay. Yes. Item number 92. Yes. All right. Staff present for 92. Uh, item number 93, we already, um, we are ready to discuss. They will be in person. That's a yes. Uh, item number 94. Yes. There's a PowerPoint. Okay. Uh, item number 95, there's a written report for this. Staff present? I, I mean, I... Basically, the, the report, it talks about next steps, so I, I don't know that we need yeah, staff here for that. All right, so no staff for 95. <coughs> there is a written report. We can receive and follow that at that time. Uh, item number uh, 96. Um, I would like to uh, continue this because they just submitted a, the previous memorandum, okay. and the whole point was to talk to Hillsborough County okay. and report on that. All right. So I Second. would like to, um, I, I want to move item number 96 to uh, April 4th on how to expedite payments to landlords. Second. Yeah. All right, we have a motion from Council Member Hertex and Council Member Carlson. This is to April 4th under staff reports. All in favor? Mm -hmm. All right. All right. All right, item number 97, we have a written response. Is that sufficient? We, I think we need to vote on it. Um, we need to vote on the change, so. All right. Yes. So we'll say yes on 97. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We'll keep them here. We already discussed 98, 99. Um, item 100, <coughs> yes. Any suggestion? I mean, we'll say yes, I'll, I have suggestions, so. All right, 101, 102, 103, 104 have already been discussed. That concludes the agenda and the addendum. May I have a, a motion to approve the agenda and the agenda? We have a motion from Councilmember Henderson, second Councilmember Clendenin. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right, Councilmember here, item number one. First is police, right? Council Members of council, members of the public, it's my great pleasure this morning to honor hey, good to see you. our um, Tampa Police Officer of the Month. Like I always say, this is something that Tampa City Council does to reflect the values of the community that we serve, a community that supports our first responders, including certainly our law enforcement officers and police officers. These are men and women who always stand tall for us. And uh, no matter um, how the, the, the public feels about them, they're always going to support members of the public, I've always believed. So it is my great pleasure to introduce our uh, uh, Tampa uh, Police Chief Burkhoff, Dr. Burkhoff, uh, to come and speak about this uh, month's honoree. Go right. ahead, sir. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Council. So this is a, this is a really good uh, story, so yeah, I'm sure you all will be very interested in this. An officer's response and training are exemplified during times of immense stress and pressure, and you're going to hear about a situation that definitely fell under that purview. For officers in a specialty team, their skills are put to the test when calls for service require additional and advanced set of skills and training. And we're going to lead into exactly what that was. But this is the case for, to my right, dive team member, Master Police Officer Dan Spears on the morning of December 17th of last year. 
The Tampa Police Marine Unit and Dive Team responded to the shrimp docks on the 2600 block of Causeway Boulevard after a report of a diesel fuel leak and a capsized vessel. The ship's captain was still believed to be on board. Once officers arrived, they located the vessel actively leaking diesel fuel, which was declared a hazmat seam. Working alongside the U.S. Coast Guard, our dive team worked to control the fuel leak to make conditions safer for the divers to attempt to enter and attempt at a rescue, a rescue or recovery of the captain. So later that evening, MPO Dan Spears was able to enter the, enter the water and begin a rescue recovery mission. A grueling effort and difficult dive with zero visibility. So sometimes we film these things, but in this case, even if we had the film, you wouldn't be able to see. That's, he's literally diving blind. He used various tools to force entry into the vessel underwater. Once inside, he was able to recover the captain and bring him to the surface where he was later identified and confirmed to be the captain of the vessel. So as we know, obviously the captain didn't make it, but it was still a great closure for the family to know that he was in there and we were able to recover him out of there. His level of experience and his ability to successfully problem solve through the clo brought closure to the family after a tragic loss. And that is why that we're recognizing Master Police Officer Dan Spears for Officer of the Month. So congratulations. congratulations. Now we have members of the community who want to come and show their appreciation. Good morning, Council. Brandon Barclay, Tampa PBA. Officer Spears, uh, here's a plaque uh, presented by, on behalf of the PBA for a job well done. And on behalf of uh, Pete Brevy and Bush Gardens, these are tickets to Bush Gardens for you. Thank you, Thank you, sir. Thank you so much. Thank you, sir. On behalf of the Tampa Bay Buccaneer and an old cop, I just wanted to thank you for your service. Absolutely. I really, really appreciate it. Myself and Frank, uh, we're both very, very proud of what you accomplished. Appreciate it. And just want to give you, uh, you. A, a, a ball, a game to ball. Name on, and, and also, I just, yeah, so they can see. And then also, I want you to, I want you to know that uh, when we start our season, your wife will call me, and I will get you two tickets awesome. for you to come into a regular season. Thank you so okay. much. Hopefully, we'll continue to do it. Absolutely. Right. Yeah, we're, 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 we're gonna. We're gonna. Yes. <laughs> yes. Thank you. That's very nice. Thank you. Hi. Good morning. Good morning. On behalf of the Strass Center for the Performing Arts, yes. I want to offer you two tickets to an upcoming show with some beverage tickets Thank as you, well. Man. Thank you so much I appreciate for you much. and your wife to enjoy Thank you. yourself. Thank, Thank you. you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Council. Good morning, Chief. Good morning, Officer Good morning. Spears. I'm Grace Gonzalez. I'm here on behalf of the Gonsmart family and the 1905 family of restaurants. We are so thankful for you keeping Tampa safe, keeping our waterways uh, healthy and happy and safe. Uh, Tampa relies on our waterways so much, so thank you so much for thank you. doing what you do. We want to present you with this gift card to enjoy some paella, sangria, oysters at Ulele. Just enjoy awesome. yourself for a little thank bit. You. Um, thank you so I much. Appreciate we appreciate you. Thank you. Thank you. Congratulations, <laughs> and thank you, thank you for all you do. Congratulations. You, I'm Jennifer thank Curry you. from Bill Curry Ford, and okay. on behalf of our dealership, and thank you. we wanted to present you a gift card as well thank as free so works pa package for your car and some other swag. Thank you. Leo's fantastic, by the way. We love him. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning, Council. Jill Witecki, Tampa Theater. You Thank you so Thank much you. for what you do, That's and uh, we'd love to invite you and your wife to come join us in the next year at the theater with an annual membership. Awesome. Thank you so much. Appreciate that. Wow. Good morning, Council. Mike MacArthur, Steps Towing. Congratulations, Thank officer. On the job well done. Thank you. Morning, Chief. And uh, on behalf of Todd, Steph, and Steps Towing, I'd like to present you this gift card to go out to dinner Thank with you, you and your so wife. Good restaurant, your choice. Keep up the good work, and thank Absolutely. you for everything you do. Thank for you for what you do for us. Thank, thank, you. thank you. Absolutely. Thank you. Hi, I'm Mary Lou How you and I'm here on behalf of the uh, Board of Directors of uh, Zoo Tampa, and this is... I'm Mark Haney, uh, with Zoo Tampa. So I wanted to congratulate you. I'm a rookie scuba diver, I can't even imagine. <laughs> but um, uh, my brother-in-law, who's been my brother-in-law for like 30 years, is a master diver, he was a diver with the Navy, and oh, he's retiring fantastic. this month, so I can't wait to get home and tell him your story. You know? Like I met him like a really cool hero today, you know? So, anyway. awesome. so I appreciate your service, I appreciate everybody's service. Thank you for keeping us safe. Congratulations, and on behalf of the Board of Directors, we're presenting you with 
an annual membership to the zoo you. for you and your, um, I think that's your wife. Yes. <laughs> Thank you for your service. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, and again, congratulations. He's got some, some zoo chopskis, including uh, sea turtles, which oh, are great divers. Absolutely. Um, as you might know. Yes. <laughs> Thank you so much. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Hello, sir. Good morning. How are you? Doing good. How are you? Good. I, I have a little script here, but it's just it's okay. not just for you. Okay. It's, yeah. it's for you and for the Tampa Fire Rescue, if that's okay. Absolutely. Yes. All righty. We're at a convergence of holy times to be filled with prayer and reflection. May the God of Abraham, which once look over you and protect each of you and the first responders, honor the police and fire and the elected officials. The good Lord sends messages to all of us. Some listen and some don't. You as first responders listen and you make a difference. Listen to the word of the Lord and you will make a difference. Honor his name, the Holy of Holies, the Lord of Lords. May his blessings be upon you and guide you. I have some gift certificates for you. That's the big message first. Um, on behalf of the Chicho Restaurant Group, we're providing you with a gift certificate. You can enjoy yourself with over there, breakfast, lunch, or dinner. On behalf of Bella Brava, we're providing you with another gift certificate. Enjoy yourself over there. That's in the Midtown section. Uh, let me see what else we got here on the Meat Market in Old Hyde Park Village. Gift certificate, enjoy yourself for lunch or dinner. <laughs> Yummy House China Bistro, enjoy yourself lunch or dinner. And a brand new one, Jackson's Bistro, enjoy yourself over there, <laughs> lunch or picture. dinner. So. <laughs> The only thing I don't have is a workout program for you to work it all off. <laughs> <laughs> that was a good one. Thanks, sir. Congratulations. Appreciate it. Thank you. And here you go. If I may, Chief. Thank, Thank you, you, sir. Thank you. Thank you. So, sir, here you go, if you don't mind here, sir. On behalf of a grateful Tampa City Council and City of Tampa, it's our great pleasure and honor to uh, give you this Tampa City Council commendation. We thank you, sir. God bless you. Yes, sir. And if you'd like to say something, you may. Uh, it's wow, it's a little overwhelming. A lot of support. <laughs> Appreciate it. Thank you all. Um, <laughs> it's, a, uh, it's a privilege uh, serving the community here. Uh, one of the best cities in the nation, one of the best departments in the nation, uh, a prestigious chain of command that we have, a lot of support. Uh, it's amazing. I'm looking forward to continuing my service uh, to the community. I appreciate it very much. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Thank you. And now, uh, City Council, if they wish to say anything. Th thank you for your service and heroism. Um, uh, like Mary Lou said, I'm, I'm also a recreational diver for like the last 30, 35 years. And I've been through some swim throughs and, and wrecks. And it's terrifying walking through wrecks that have been sitting there a long time. But I always wondered uh, who were the brave people that would go into retention ponds and, and uh, in places where there's no visibility at all in the mud and, and look for... Uh, people who are deceased and you know accident victims and murder victims and I can't imagine the bravery that you and your colleagues have in doing that and so I thank you so much um, because it's uh, it's an incredible um, act of heroism that you all do every day thank you thank, thank you. you very much anybody else thank you very much sir congratulations Absolutely. We thank you thank you all and, thank you, sir. and 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 just and your first name <coughs> Shalia and Shalia just his uh, uh, officer Spears wonderful wife who there's always a family oh, beside yeah. them that puts so, up with a lot thank you 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 we'll just take a moment here and next we have firefighter of the quarter oh no problem yes. more conservative so um, we'll see how it goes how are you doing all right 
Go ahead, Council Member Vieira. Thank you, Mr. Party. Chairman. It is my great pleasure to do the um, Tampa Firefighter of the Quarter, Lieutenant James Trotner, who's with us here today. Uh, and to speak about him is going to be our Tampa uh, Fire Chief, uh, Barbara Tripp. So come forward, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, Council. Barbara morning. Tripp, Fire Chief for Tampa Fire Rescue. Uh, first and foremost, I would like to introduce you to Lieutenant Jane Troutner. Lieutenant Troutner is actually assigned to the Cross Creek area up in New Tampa. He's assigned to Rescue 21B, who has been selected as firefighter the first quarter of 2024. Lieutenant Trout Troutner has proudly served Tampa Fire Rescue for over 21 years, with a total of 24 years in his profession. He embodies as the Tampa Fire, Fire who has unyielding focus to the Tampa Bay community. His abilities and dedication to duty consistently result in successes that have enhanced the community confidence in Tampa Fire Rescue as a whole. He is a key player to the community as far as relying on providing the community with the first response and immediate response as well as quality response. Lieutenant Troutner has promptly served in the Rescue Division for over 20 years of his 21 years with Tampa Fire Rescue. He has honed his skills as a paramedic instructor for Hillsborough Community College, Pasco Hernandez Community College, and Kaiser Institute. Lieutenant Troutner has dedicated a great portion of his time to mentoring the young men and women with that have the desire to become paramedic firefighters through multiple programs, as well as being a course developer and a lead instructor for many of Tampa Fire Rescue and Service uh, courses. Lieutenant Troutner has spent numerous hours teaching medical courses for the department. He is an outstanding lead instructor for many of the programs because of his intelligence, his work ethics, his ability to instruct guidance, and ability to mold the young minds into competent paramedics in the future. Lieutenant Troutner is one of the go-to guys who may need assistance. He's one of the go-to individuals who may, need, who may need assistance regarding proper application of the medical protocol established by the medical directors. Lieutenant Troutner is a certified HAZMAC technician who probably helped out on that scene from the previous um, officer. He's also a certified fire inspector. He's an e-board member of Local 754, and he's a training proctor for evaluating new paramedics. And as well, he is a past member, 15 years for the Urban Search and Rescue Team. And that is part of the Florida Task Force, where they actually are exposed to a lot of critical situation disasters that happen <coughs> throughout the, um, the nation. Regarding his dedication to the job and his crew, Lieutenant Troutner hold tabletop exercise with his crew and maintain training for both suppression, which is fire, as well as the EMS, which is medical, where his passion lies with the EMS. Lieutenant Troutner is a loving husband and father, and he is definitely actively involved in the lives of his children. He is truly an individual who possesses the intelligence and God-given ability to master any field of study, skill, or trade, no matter the complexity. It is my honor to present to you the firefighter of the first quarter, Lieutenant James Trautner. Thank you. Thank you, Chief Tripp. And now we have members of the community who would like to come forward and say some words. And I know uh, Mr. Stocko would like to say some extra words for his uh, former fellow board member. Uh, good morning, Council Nick Stocko. Um, we want to echo everything that Fire Chief said. Um, Lieutenant James Troutner truly is a leader or a mentor and has truly served the community. So we want to echo uh, the fire chief's words on that. Uh, I, I would like to add something. Uh, 17 years ago, uh, I was an explorer and I was doing a ride along as a, as a teenager. And that day in East Tampa, we were at Hillsborough on 30th at the fire station. And Lieutenant Troutner was a paramedic at the time. And he was acting in the role of a lieutenant. This is 17 years ago. And I witnessed my first ever cardiac arrest on a call. It was at the TGH Healthplex just behind the station uh, over at Hillsborough 30th. Uh, by the time we got to Tampa General, uh, the individual had re regained their heart rate and Lieutenant uh, James Troutner was breathing for them. Um, Lieutenant James Troutner saved that person. And 17 years ago, I witnessed my first ever revival of life and it was under Lieutenant James Troutner's care. 
from then I thought everyone got revived until I got hired and I realized it takes someone special like James Troutner to do so. So we want to congratulate you. Um, we have a plaque uh, on behalf of the Tampa Firefighters and we have a Tampa Firefighters uh, local hat and on behalf of Bush Gardens for complimentary tickets. Congratulations. Yeah, my name is Stephen White. Uh, I'm the co-chair of the Tampa Firefighter Review Awards Review Board, and uh, we'd like to present him with this plaque, along with um, a pen that's, you know, that he can wear on his uniform from now on that uh, indicates that you were Firefighter of the Quarter. And I just want to say I've had the privilege of knowing him and working with him for quite a long time. We've taught together out there at the Skills Lab, and everything they've said is, is, is true. It's, he's an outstanding paramedic. He's somebody that just really has a lot of passion for it, and... Uh, and we all have, we have a lot of great medics, but if there's somebody you want working on your family member, this is the guy that I would pick. Uh, he is just outstanding. And I'm, I'm uh, not only proud to call him a coworker, but a friend. So, you know, he's good people. Yep. Mm -hmm. Good morning again. Good morning. Uh, on behalf of the Buccaneers and the Glazier, the entire organization, we'd like to present this football to Lieutenant Troutner, as many of you here know, or all of you probably, long-standing tradition with the Buccaneers to present footballs to people who go above and beyond the, in, in their normal duties. And it, it's <coughs> clearly that's what Lieutenant Troutner has done, given what we've heard here today. So I'd like to present him with this football. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. much Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you Andre, on behalf of us, he already said everything perfect, but I have a dear, dear, dear t a story real quick to tell you. That Please. gentleman behind you, uh, by the name of Bennett, Mm -hmm. He used to, he, him and I used to run behind the academy when we were cop, very young stallion. And, <laughs> and then we kept running except he cheated and just practiced a little bit more. And that's not the only time that he beat me. But I know that the, the academy still run the drills mm -hmm. and the fire. And I can, we could not thank you enough thank for you, all that you have done throughout the years. And I know that this young lady is going to remember Please let me know which game you want to come, and I'll make sure that you have tickets for Appreciate that. Appreciate that. Okay? Thank you very much. Thank you so Thank much. You. Congratulations Thank you, again. sir. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Real picture. Thank you. Thank you. Congrats, Cam. Oh, I'm, I thought I was running with it, Chief. Had the laces down. Hi, how are you? Hi. I'm Grace Gonzalez. Nice, nice to, to meet, meet you. you. Yes. I'm here on behalf of the Godsmart family and the 1905 family of restaurants. We want to thank you for just being an amazing community member to have Appreciate it. paramedic EMT training, hazmat training, fire training, mm -hmm. all that you do. Thank you so much for being a leader. We want you to enjoy yourselves with your family. Uh, please choose any of our restaurants around the state of Florida. We've got plenty here in Tampa area. Um, just enjoy yourselves with your night thank off. You. Thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations. Uh -huh. Yes, ma'am. Good morning again, Hi, Council. Good morning. Jill Latecki, Tampa Hi, Theater. Um, on behalf of the theater, we'd like to thank you for your service, congratulate you on this honor, uh, present you and your family a membership to the theater for the next year, and let you know that uh, our family favorite series starts at the end of the month, so we hope to see you there. Okay, <laughs> thank you. Hi, good morning. Hi. Mary good morning. Dillon from Hi, the Stress Center for yes, Performing Arts. Thank you for your service. On behalf of the Stress Center, we have two tickets to attend the uh, upcoming show, some beverage tickets in, in, included. I, I love working the Stratus Center. Oh, uh, I do fire watch events there, medical <laughs> events there. Well, now so, you can be a patron and just sit down. It's a great place there. to be. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. Uh -huh. Hi, good morning. Congratulations. Thank you. And thank you for everything. Uh -huh. Jennifer Curry from Bill Curry Ford. Yes, ma'am. In this bag, we've got a um, works package certificate and a gift card and some goodies. Okay. So thank you for everything. And we'd love to host you and serve you if you ever need anything. Okay. Just let me know. We so. just, I just bought my wife a 2021 Ford <laughs> Expedition. <laughs> <laughs> Best car we've ever had. <laughs> Phenomenal. Hopefully you don't need service. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Good morning, Councilman Mike MacArthur, Steph's Coming to Service. Congratulations on a job well done. Thank you for everything you do for our community. So on behalf of Todd Steph and Steph's Towing, I'm going to present you a gift card for dinner for you and your family. Absolutely. Enjoy it. Take some time off. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Everything. Let me know if you Tell need Tell Mr. Anything. Todd I said hello. We'll do it. Yes, Thank sir. You. Hi. Good morning. I'm Good Mary morning. Bailey. I'm Mitch Mary. I'm Mark Haney. Hey, Mr. Mark. 
And we're here on behalf of Zoo Tampa. I serve on the board of directors, and uh, we're presenting you with an annual membership to the zoo for you and your family. I want to comment, you sound like an amazing person, but I was particularly impressed with the mentorship because mm -hmm. that's really a selfless act to bring up the next generation, and it's, it's a very personal uh, and dedicated thing. So thank you for not only what you do, but that you're bringing along the next generation. So thank that's you very, very awesome. Congratulations. Thank you to all the firefighters and the uh, paramedics. My family's used you several times, and you've done fantastic things by us. Thank, thank you, and you. congratulations. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> We've got a year membership, family membership, as Mary Lou said. We've got a bear. Okay. Now, it can be Smokey the Bear for the fireside. Okay. Or it can be a Care Bear for the EMT side. Care Bear. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, sir. Good morning. How are you? I'm great. Okay. Uh, the message I read earlier was uh, for you all as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'll tell you that... Uh, we attended the, uh, the firefighters banquet this year, and um, my grandson and one of his friends, they're candidates um, okay. in the academy. And I want to tell you the first thing that happened when we arrived was all these young people, they, they flocked to you. And they were all talking about, well, this is a great program and all of that. But the mentorship is the most important part of that. And these young people are getting the right message early, uh, and I, we re really appreciate what you've done for them. <clears throat> um, on behalf of uh, Jackson's Bistro, we're providing you with a gift certificate. You can enjoy yourself over there for lunch or dinner. On behalf of Bella Brava, same, <laughs> lunch or dinner, uh, daily eats, breakfast, lunch, or dinner. On behalf of the meat market in Old Hyde Park, your choice, lunch or dinner and Yummy House lunch or dinner. And here are your certificates. Um, the letters serve as a certificate on some of them, and others, they, they require you to have the good certificate. But anyway, congratulations, and thank you again for your mentorship. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. Appreciate it. So it's very obvious, sir, that you are loved and you are respected by many, many people, and you have one hell of a legacy in Tampa Fire in the city of Tampa. So because of that, Tampa City Council honors you, sir. Here you go. Thank God you bless you, much. sir. Thank and if you. you'd like to speak, you may, sir. Absolutely. Thank you. All right. <laughs> <laughs> Good morning, Council. Good morning. Um, Lieutenant James Troutner, Tampa Fire Rescue 21. I uh, just wanted to say thank you uh, for this acknowledgement. Uh, city staff that's here, uh, my executive staff, fire department staff, Chief Tripp, uh, and all her uh, team. Um, First and foremost, I'd like to thank uh, my Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ, um, for looking over me in my 21, 22 year career here at TFR, um, keeping me and my, my coworkers uh, safe. Um, number two, uh, my family, uh, my lovely wife, Rebecca, uh, <clears throat> my daughter, Jaylee. Um, my son's not here. He's um, chasing his dream. Uh, he's a college baseball player. Uh, they have a game today, uh, so he couldn't attend. Um, but um, what my wife and kids have dealt with, you know, in this career, a lot of ups and downs, more ups than downs, but um, my support, my rock. Um, really appreciate that. Um, Local 754, thank you very much for acknowledging me. You know, great group of guys, uh, my, my uh, colleagues, all the firefighters, all the paramedics, all the EMTs, everybody at Tampa Fire Rescue, we're the best department in the country, without a doubt. You know, we've got ups and downs, bumps and bruises, but every department has that, okay? Um, but I'm so happy to be a Tampa firefighter. Um, and... Uh, Last but not least, I, I have some, some mentors in the room, um, some people that uh, mean a lot in my career um, over the years. Um, retired Chief uh, Terry Hall, um, Captain Gray, uh, training specialist. Uh, there's a lot of people in this room. Uh, training Chief Dittman uh, was my lieutenant many years ago, uh, steered me on the right path. Um, there's just a lot of people in this room that uh, mean a lot to me. So appreciate it. I'll uh, give the mic and you guys can continue on with your, uh, your council meeting. Thank you. Okay, yeah, absolutely. Anybody? Congratulations, very, uh, thank you very much, sir, for your sacrifice, uh, everything that you've done and for your family, you know, the sacrifice that they've made, because it's not easy. 
So thank you very much. Congratulations. Councilmember Hurtag? Uh, yes, I was just going to say, I thought uh, when I read your bio, the part that, that really stuck out to me is that you have chosen to stay. They have wanted to promote you, and you have said, no, this is my passion. I am a teacher, and as a former educator, and I know uh, Councilwoman Henderson is also an educator, just I completely understand that. Yes, and I think it's absolutely wonderful, and it's, you know, you know when you found your right fit, and I'm just, I'm thrilled that you've been able to stay there and continue to help all the folks who are moving forward. Thank you so much. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you, Councilman. Yeah, if this uh, 22 years of saving lives and running and burning buildings doesn't work out for you, I think there's a future in hawking Fords on these 30 minute, com 30 second commercials. Like <laughs> so yeah, uh, good job. Yeah, thank you. thank you. Thank you very much. Congratulations. <laughs> We're going to pause for a moment and let the uh, room clear. Okay, good morning. All right. We recognize Chairman Guido Maniscalco for the next award. Come on up, come on up. Good morning, good morning, good morning. Good morning. All right, at this time I'd like to recognize uh, and present this commendation to Tampa Pride for the 10th Annual Tampa Pride Celebration, which is going to take place on March 23rd in Historic Ybor City. The Tampa City Council proudly recognizes the 10th Annual Tampa Pride Celebration. The city of Tampa's diversity is our strength and is only fitting that it should be celebrated. Your contribution to the community is legendary, including the Holiday Toy Drive, the Tampa Pride Foundation Scholarship Fund, as well as the upcoming Tampa Pride 5K Rainbow Run, amongst many other things. Individually and collectively, members of Tampa's LGBTQ community contribute greatly to neighborhood revitalization, economic vitality, arts and culture, and the social fabric of our city, state, and country. So it is Tampa City Council's profound honor and privilege to present Tampa Pride with this commendation on the 7th day of March, 2024. And here is Carrie West. Congratulations. And I see, yes. hello, sir. And Mark was somewhere. Yeah, Mark's right Mark's there. Mark's right there. There, there you oh, go. Good. If you'd like to say anything, sir. Sure, I would. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, on behalf of uh, Tampa Pride, our 10-year anniversary, we have a lot going on, and including there's a lot of people that just left that could be part of our 5K run this Saturday morning at 7 o'clock in the morning. We greatly appreciate our inaugural run and rainbow run, and that's going to be at Al Lopez, so everybody wants to come out and do a little running, jogging. I meant we're going to have a timed race, but we're also going to have a doggy joggy and dress to impress run. And that's going to be a helpful. It's going to the Tampa Pride Foundation. And that we've given out, and I'll be going, 20 scholarships of individuals that individuals who have a dream. It's not just by GPA, but have a dream to go further and to go on to trade school, skilled school, or on to college. And individuals that face and need a little financial help. And this is a great way that we're going through there and helping the community. Last year, we got called upon to do a toy drive because there was an instance where a law firm backed out for the employees, single member employees here in Hillsborough County needed help. And we raised and brought in for a couple hundred children, we went and we brought in over 500 toys with the community of Tampa and Ybor City. 
And that's just one of the many things. But the nicest thing that's coming up there is this is a great community. And it's a great community to be a part of. And we are so proud to help bring in, we're hoping, over the 80,000 people coming to visit Tampa on March 23rd to watch the Diversity Parade. And I know that you'll be all a part of that at the beginning. And we'll be shining in the stars underneath the graces of what everybody has for a clear sky and a great community. And then we have, just to make sure you all know, we do have an American Idol finalist going to be performing. And also from RuPaul, we also have a performer coming in for the headlining concerts. But it is already totally sold out. We have sold out for the last month. And on behalf of that, I would say thank you, thank you. I'm going to have Derek. Derek's there in charge of our IT, but also in charge of our parades. So he's the one that people can shout at saying, I want to be in the parade, but Derek. Well, thank you very much. Um, our parade is full this year, but we're looking forward to seeing some of you. And uh, we have a nice variety of bands and floats and walking groups from all over the community. So it's going to be an amazing celebration, and we hope to see everyone here, there. <laughs> <laughs> Good. Thanks. Oh, could we get a picture of all of us out there, too, if there's a chance? All right. All yeah, right. Let's smile. Hold, hold it up. Hold it up. Oh, all right. Yeah, there you go. Go ahead and there. Good. Thank you very much. Greatly appreciate this. Yeah. We'll members see you on. Oh, members of council, would you like to say something? Anybody? Um, yeah, you, ten, 10 years is great. I remember when uh, this started 10 years ago, and obviously I wasn't in office, but just as a Tempeño, I remember being very, very proud because this is something that good and decent communities do is to acknowledge all of our people, including our LGBT brothers and sisters and their families and loved ones. And that's, you know, uh, life is about addition, not subtraction. And more than ever, uh, this issue is so important to us. So thank you all for all that you do. I just want, oh, Councilman Carlson. Um, yeah, I just want to thank you for all you've done, too. It's really hard work, all the events and things that you all put together, and it, I think it's all volunteers, so thank you. Um, besides creating fun events, you also have, you all also have done a great job of promoting uh, Ebor and, uh, and LGBT-owned businesses in Ebor, which is a, a great thing, and helping to develop the character of Ebor. But you also, um, uh, you also have uh, been a symbol for the world that we are an inclusive community, and um, you all get lots of publicity, national, international publicity, and hopefully you will again this year in a positive way with all the mixed messages and negative messages in the world. It's, it's great that we're going to have hopefully positivity and great weather in a couple weeks. Thank you. Councilman Walman Henderson. Yeah, good morning. Congratulations. Good morning. I really appreciate you sharing your community service, stepping up, giving out scholarships, as well as the toy drive um, when someone else could not do it. Those are some wonderful things, and I wish you well on your big celebration coming up. I don't, I, we've known each other for a long time and you know I think a lot of a lot of folks that are newer in the community don't realize what how instrumental the two of you were in, in revitalization of Ebor and really kind of urban pioneers in, in starting what we see and I understand there's some rumors that maybe there's some more businesses moving into Ebor City and I think we can thank you all for, for helping that type of catalyst and having that again on behalf of the city of Tampa one thank you for the uh, economic impact that your organization has on the city of Tampa and again on Ebor City you know, shining the light that it can be a safe and fun place to be for all, all types of people. And, and it's very inclusive. It's, it's a wonderful event. You bring people from uh, all over, not just the city of Tampa, but all over the region, state, and some people, tourists fly in for, for this event. So congratulations again on, on hosting a, a safe and inclusive event. And you are a welcome addition to the social fabric of the city of Tampa. Thank you. Very good. Right. Very good. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'd like to make one more point. You know, our sister city is in Orlando. And we were called upon, and there's members up on the uh, council right now, I have to recognize, that helped us bring together one of the largest candlelight vigils for the Pulse nightclub. And that was hard because we had right the members of Tampa Pride and also the Gabor District Coalition that were murdered at the Pulse nightclub that were members of our organization. And moving forward, the council and the mayor's office at that time brought together the county and the city and the fire trucks 
and also the hanging of the flags in the parking lot on 7th and on 14th. And over 7,000 people came to that candlelight vigil. And uh, we are going to have that one aired on, on the city TV that was done by, uh, which was a beautiful sight by uh, Kathy Abbott. So we want to make sure that that is going to be new, renewed again as a scene as the, it was all done by drones. But that was one of the biggest avenues, and that became, and is worldwide, as you had made mention, we are worldwide known, and all the prides around the world, that Tampa is the fun <laughs> pride, and go to Tampa, and we will be, probably have around 150 world leaders and local regional leaders in the United Nations in the area, because we are now part, inner pride is part of the United Nations this year. Thank you. Thanks Thank so much. Thank you. Councilman Miranda. Councilman Miranda will now present the next commendation. Good morning, council members. Uh, this morning is a, uh, a moment that uh, I'm sending next to an individual that for about 40 years served the city of Tampa in deepest honor and uh, through thick and thin, uh, he worked very diligently. So I'm going to read this thing, something I hardly ever do with the whole thing, because this combination was not written by a city employee. It was not in any way done with any help other than the people that he works with themselves wrote the accommodation. That shows you what type of individual he is, what type of operation he runs, and without him there wouldn't be many of the amenities that we have today that anything you say comes out immediately on your TV that the people are watching. So watch yourselves this morning. <laughs> Why are you it's a pleasure at me? for the Tampa City Council to present this combination to Mr. Dan Fogia for approximately 40 years of service to the city of Tampa and its citizens. You have been in the forefront of every major technological advancement. You were instrumental in the creation of the city's first INET that interconnects all city facilities, spearheaded, designed, and constructed all multiple TV studios to be used by the city officials and staff members. You designed and built two state-of-the-art video production remote trucks, enabling the city to forecast, to uh, cable cast, I mean, control room many times the improvement to all that were there before. You have done the city CTTVE viewers and made it easier for city staff and the public to make presentation in council chambers. Many of Tampa's young people have had their lives heard because of the involvement and design of the te te television production facility in the city's NFL YET Center. Among many achievements of outside confidence of City Hall, including directing several award-winning sports events, utilizing our remote capabilities, enabling many Tampa NFL YET centers, and those close to working with relationships in our Hillsborough County Partners and HTV which has enabled live production support throughout the area. You must singularly point out the fact that you're responsible for enabling virtual meeting participation in Tampa City Council, that's what we do today, especially during the COVID-19 pandemic. To your credit, this technology is still being utilized today as part of the City Council meeting. Your sincere dedication to the city and the vast numbers of technological improvements that you have brought to the city are monumental. Your expertise will solely be missed, presented this 7th day of May, 2024. We wish us in peace and happiness upon your retirement. During your tender, you have worked for an administration for four mayors, including Sandy Freeman, Dick Draco, Pam Orio, Bob Buckhorn, and Jane Castor. You have served approximately to 43 city council members. And let me thank the three sponsors that wrote this, because we didn't have all the knowledge available that these three individuals do. Brian Sullivan, Ivan Benson, and Tom Dia. And no one 
has ever received accommodation <coughs> that was written by the people they work with. This is the first. To me, I say thank you very much, my friend, mi amigo. Appreciate it's a pleasure, un placer de estar contigo. Igualmente. Mr. Danforth. Thank you all. I really appreciate this uh, commendation. I'm not here to tell you that I'm the luckiest man, but I do feel very lucky both professionally and personally. Professionally, because this has been a gratifying and fulfilling career for me. When I came here, my first boss, Bob Seepy, who hired me, uh, told me, you go ahead and design everything and get everything going and keep it going. And I've had that mandate from the very first day that I work here, and I try to do it till the day I leave. Personally, it's, uh, it's been a wonderful life for me. My, I have a wonderful wife. I have two beautiful daughters and good son-in-laws and four tremendous grandchildren. And I battle some personal uh, uh, health issues, and I have overcome them, so everything is okay now. And then I feel very happy, and hopefully will I be able to leave this job knowing that whoever comes along will be able to follow what I have done. And I really appreciate everything. Thank you very much. Anybody? Anybody? Councilman Vieira, Councilman Carlson. Uh, thank you, Councilman Miranda, for bringing this forward. And just I just wanted to say how much I know we all appreciate all of the hard work that you all do. And uh, something that Councilman Miranda stressed, which was that it was written by your colleagues, that's, that's really great. And uh, we're, we're just very, very thankful. So just wanted to say that. Y Dios te bendiga. Thank you. Gracias. Councilman Carls. Yeah, <clears throat> appreciate the wisdom experience and um, <clears throat> uh, the, the adaptability of you and your team over the last few years, especially during COVID, how you all work so hard. That was a miracle what you all pulled off. And besides help, helping us, what you're really doing is you're helping our constituents in the world um, experience democracy. Um, and we're on the front line every week, and that's because of you all. Um, we get crowds in the room, but the crowds outside are much larger. And people all the time say they watch, and they appreciate having that. And what you all do is just invaluable to the democracy of our community. So thank you. And I don't know how we're going to replace all of you all when everybody else retires. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. I wish you all the best in your retirement. Thank you for your friendship and all your hard work and everything that you do and working with Lisa and coordinating and it's not easy, but we appreciate you very, very much. Congratulations and happy retirement. Sir. Thank you. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. All right, at this time we'll go to public comment. Mr. Shelby, yes? It, may, may I before say something? Yeah. Before? Thank you. I, I, I did, since we can't speak during public comment, it's come to my attention, I believe, that we're going to have um, in public comment um, uh, Colonel Anderson, who's the sister of, of my good friend, uh, Miss D, who's here, uh, who's a wonderful attorney. And we can't uh, speak during public comment, so I just wanted to recognize you and know that if you come speak during public comment for Women's History Month, that we unfortunately can't say anything, but I will motion after council uh, for something separate to give you a commendation for your amazing service to our country. Because again, we can't speak, so I didn't want you to think that we were, yeah. So thank you, thank you, Mr. Chair. Thank you very much, Mr. Shelby. Yes, thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, City Council. Martin Shelby, City Council Attorney. Uh, we're coming upon public comment. It's your opportunity, members of the public, to be able to share with City Council items that are on the agenda, your thoughts, your opinions, uh, and items that are related to city business. Uh, a three-minute time limit applies to all speakers providing public comment. And also that Council is requesting that you refrain from making personal attacks against any city official, staff member, or members of the public, and you uh, comport yourself um, and not engage in disruptive behavior. And uh, the council rules do provide that um, persons failing to comply with the council rules uh, could be by the chair ruled out of order and at the discretion of the chair may be removed from the chambers for the remainder of the day's meeting. 
Now, if you're here to speak on an item that is set for a public hearing, other than general public comment, you will have that opportunity when the item is heard later on the agenda. And uh, the time to speak about items on the staff reports is now. And uh, finally, uh, please know that city council members, as uh, council member uh, Vieira has stated, uh, are prevented by the rules by engaging a speaker during public comment. And the public, please do be aware that uh, the city council uh, cannot take your questions or have a dialogue with you during public comment. This is your opportunity to express your position. Thank you. Thank you very much. We have two registered public speakers, uh, and then we'll go to the in-person. The first is Mr. Franklin Perez. Mr. Perez, if you're on, please unmute yourself. You have three minutes, followed by Michael Randolph. Mr. Michael Randolph. Mr. Perez, if you're uh, on, please unmute yourself and uh, go ahead, sir. Uh, hi, this is Franklin Perez. Can you hear me? Yes, sir. Go ahead. Great. Thank you. Uh, my name is Franklin Perez. I live in Seminole and Hillsborough counties. Please rescind all pro-Israel resolutions you have made in the past. Enough. Israel is a Jewish supremacist apartheid state that has been committing ethnic cleansing and human rights abuses against Palestinians for 75 plus years as per reputable human rights organizations like Amnesty International, Human Rights Watch, and Beth Salem. And now you can add genocide as Israel is on trial at the Hague for genocide against Palestinians. Stop supporting Israel. Stop giving it weapons, stop giving it money, and condemn it for what it is, an apartheid and genocidal state. Many human rights experts refer to Gaza as an open air concentration camp. The Israeli apartheid regime's prime minister Benjamin Netanyahu has invoked genocidal language against Palestinians in the Gaza concentration camp by referring to an ancient biblical passage in the Old Testament comparing Palestinians to Amalekites that must all be put to death. Men, women, children, babies. The Israeli apartheid regime's defense minister, Yoav Gallant, has dehumanized Palestinians by referring to Palestinians in the Gaza concentration camp as human animals. Miko Pellet, Israeli Jew, son of a famous Israeli Jew general, ex-Zionist occupation forces enforcer and Palestinian rights activist has stated that the Israeli army is the best terrorist group in the world. Ex-Israeli Jew Zionist occupation forces pilot Yonatan Shapira has stated that the Israeli army is a terrorist organization run by war criminals. At this point, due to scattered Zionist only occupier settlements in the West Bank, the only fair solution to the Israel-Palestine conflict is a one-state solution where everyone, Jew and Palestinian, has equal rights. That's what is referred to as a free Palestine from the Jordan River to the Mediterranean Sea. All U.S. government entities should be pressuring the Israeli apartheid regime to move towards such a free Palestine. That includes the dismantling of the Gaza concentration camp. The refrain that Israel has the right to self-defense is a red herring. The real question is, does Israel have the right to use force to maintain an illegal occupation and apartheid state that commits ethnic cleansing, genocide, and human rights abuses against Palestinians? The clear answer is no. Under international law, Israel has no right of self-defense when it is the oppressor and occupier, while Palestinians do have the right to physically resist and defend themselves against their oppressor and occupier, the Israeli apartheid regime. Our tax dollars should be going back to our own communities, not to support unrelenting bombing and genocide in Gaza. No more money for Israel's crimes. I request that the Tampa City Council introduce a resolution to stand with Palestinians in demanding an end to the siege of Gaza a permanent ceasefire and an end to all USA to Israel. Military, economic, political. Ceasefire now, ceasefire now. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Next speaker is Michael Randolph. Mr. Michael Randolph, if you're on, please unmute yourself. Good morning, sir. Good morning. My name is uh, Michael Randolph. I want to first start off on the east side. The West Tampa community does support the Fair Oaks project in general. And specifically, we support the retaining the name of Fair Oaks as it represents historic significance. So I want to jump back on the west side now. And I definitely want to give a shout out to the CAC, specifically Joe Robinson, specifically as it relates to the K-9 deal with Jess Elementary School. This deal couldn't be possible without the neighborhood groups in the community. I want to give recognition to the OHOP, I mean, the Old West Tampa Neighborhood Association, the High Park Association, and the River Front Association. In 2020, the West Tampa CDC was part 
of the Rome Yard deal discussion. During that deal, we emphasized the importance of the K deny uh, strategy, even before Jess Elementary was closed. As a matter of fact, the West Tampa Group has partnered the Tampa Housing Authority and the related group has created more affordable housing in Tampa than any other group. As part of the K-9 deal, the West Tampa CDC is reaching out to the school to provide after-school programs to the kids, including artificial intelligence, Jack PT, and uh, Web3, along with entrepreneurship from those kids ranging from 10 up. As you know, the West Tampa the West Tampa community has all, always been was, was a city at one particular point. Joe Robinson put it, I think, clear. When you come to West Tampa, you have to check in, as any of the neighborhood groups. We, I'm, and I'm saying this, it's not the community saying this, but respect our gangster when it comes to West Tampa and our folks. I want to give a shout out to the West Tampa community because this time it's a win-win for our neighborhoods. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, sir. All right, that concludes our registered public speakers. We'll go to in-person public speakers. If you wish to speak, please come on up. State your name. You have three minutes. Yes, sir. Good morning. Yes, my name is Jamil Scott. And um, I addressed y'all plenty of times about some issues that done happened to me a disabled individual in the city where y'all done put me in doodle -doo cells in the county jail at times for a marshman act. Now y'all done did it again. Just recently, I was bake acting from my own residence on live Facebook. Seemed like every time something happened to me, y'all try to whitewash it or erase it. It's a time for accountability in this city. I got a citizen's complaint that was just denied about that situation. I, I, I text that man right there that's out of, the, out of the, um, Mr. Louise, that's not present right now. I guess he's ducking and hiding right now. I called Janet Castle on live Facebook. My page is public. Janelle Scott looked me up. All my issues that's been going on in this city is live Facebook. So it's time for y'all to take accountability. Because y'all call yourself adults. Adults add to life, not take away. So I'm going to give y'all these city complaints, citation numbers. Y'all might need to go review these. The last one that was just denied, I got a confirmation of a 1251. I got one right now. I didn't receive a denial letter. I got a call. I got another one for 1283. And this is regarding something that happened on the, the bus. They sent me a letter saying that, yeah, we shut your arm up in the door, but we ain't held accountable. Why is that? Why are y'all not doing nothing for disabled individuals that are screaming out on live Facebook trying to get resolution about things happening to them. Now I've been staying in an apartment for seven to eight months breathing fiberglass. Now they're trying to evict me and take me off Section 8. I'm tired of this. Listen, you've been warned. The name of this shirt says Raymer. He not speaking to y'all again. Thank you very much, sir. Next speaker, please state your name. Yes, sir. Marcus Lenhardt, 409 West Paris Street. I'm here to talk to you today about the inherent challenges of unwritten policies. Um, unwritten policies imply special privilege. They're levied out heavy-handed. They're unpredictable, introduce inconsistency. The random application undermines the standards which we um, govern, govern our, our, our neighborhoods. And, and most importantly, there's no accountability. On the bottom there, there's an example of special privilege where a developer is given insight into how an unwritten policy could be applied to aid their application. It's taken from the design exception that was overturned here on February 1st. Negative impacts of unwritten policies. Um, they're permanent and irreversible. Application of unwritten policy is not known until the time the, the structure is permanent. It lacks transparency and predictability, applied through an administrative action outside the public view. It's not aligned with zoning and is, and is in sharp contrast to it. Zoning districts applying to RS-50 through an unwritten policy Standards to SHRS would render the Seminole Heights zoning designation no longer relevant and therefore would call into question the reason these districts, if this um, exists, if the zoning administrator renders them useless through administrative actions. Development coordination's challenges with written policies. A 2021 audit of the development coordination 
Statement of condition. The Development Coordination Division does not have written policies or procedures in place for daily operations. The effect. Potential inconsistencies in decisions make the way for processes are carried out and also loss of operational knowledge in the event of turnover or retirement. The action was for them to implement all uh, new policies and procedures by September 2023. This has not been done eight months later. As on my street, twice now, unwritten policies have been applied to applications um, from Onyx and East. Because there's inconsistencies in application, controls or standards, citizens do not always have the structure for which they can rely. At a minimum, citizens should be afforded consistency and transparency. And they are essential in a process that enforces accountability. Because citizens cannot control the inability of a developer to mitigate the risk, the inability for um, the city to implement controls properly codified in written policies for which they can rely, and they can also not control the ability for the city to apply unwritten policies twice to, to building applications on their street. However, we have a unique opportunity today. Um, I had an advanced meeting to understand how the build, build two line for 412 West Paris would be established. I met with Eric Cotton and Abby Feely, and they communicated the intent that they would approve this building application by Onyx and East by applying an unwritten policy yet again. So my ask is for, today is for, since we had, do have the advanced knowledge, I ask the City Council to pull this building application on 412 West Paris Street into a more transparent and inclusive process, which requires the applicant to support their build tool line and potentially apply through a design exception. Thank you very much, Enforce sir. accountability Thank you very of our much. zoning administration, Thank too. Thank you very much, sir. Thank, Thank you. you. All right, next speaker. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning, Council. Good morning. My name is Carrie Hurst, and I am a uh, lifelong member of East, East Tampa community, and I am here in support of the Fair Oaks uh, Recreational Complex, which um, I am a part of a senior group that's meeting at one of the recreational centers in East Tampa, and we have been much anticipating, much waiting for the advent of our new dedicated senior center, which will be a part of that complex. And I'm just asking for your support in moving this uh, forward so that we can realize our dream of having a dedicated place among other seniors who are meeting at all the recreational centers in East Tampa that we can come together and have a dedicated home. Because where we're meeting now at the Reagan Park, that is a community center. And we are sometimes displaced by whatever is taking place uh, uh, as a rental facility there. So we are just been much anticipating having a place to call our home. So we're asking for your support in moving this project forward so that we can realize that. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, next speaker. Good morning, please state your name. Good morning, City Council, East Tampa. I come here with my over 50 and fabulous and original supporter of the Fair Oaks Community Center in East Tampa. Our oldest member of the community over at Fair Oaks is 86. What's your name, ma'am? Verlene Drayton. Yes, ma'am. Uh, we um, come in support, full support of the 10.2 acres for East Tampa Recreation Complex. Let's go ahead and build it. They will come. The young, the old, the disabled, the children, we all going to come. We will find us a place, whether it be the seniors, whether it be the children, whether it be the elderly. That center is 10.2 acres. Now we have reparation here today. We got, um, also we have our resolution for, what's that, 568. So I mean, yeah, 568, come on, let's make this happen here in East Tampa. We need this, we need it now. It's way overdue. Let's get this here in Tampa. They got the new um, Ferros, I mean, Funland complex built over there, 354 units. So right there, let us know somebody is paying attention to East Tampa. So let's continue the good vibes that we're starting here, okay? So this will be the next project here in East Tampa. Also, I'm going to let y'all know down at uh, Fair Oaks on April 5th, we'll be having a fish fry from 11 to 1.30. So come on down. Dennis 15, sandwiches 10. We welcome you all. Let's get this project done. And we are very much in support. Thank you very much, and enjoy the rest of y'all day. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. All right, next speaker. Good morning, sir. Please state your name. Yes. Mentez Knott, Tampa, Florida. 
want to say Uhuru because Uhuru means freedom in Swahili, and Mentisna means anything is possible. We as African people should always be thinking about our freedom. Why is that? Because our relationship to colonialism, our relationship to commonwealth, our relationship to white Western civilization and white manifest destiny, 624 years of slavery. Slavery is worse today than it has ever been in any period of history for the African. It's interesting to see the African people that's here because in reality, African people are scared. They're scared of the police. We're scared to walk in our communities. We're scared to be in our homes. Breonna Taylor, good example. That's how African people live from day to day. And we're always insulted and humiliated with all forms of indignations. Part of the history say we were brought here as slaves. That's not the true history, but if that's the narrative they want to go with, we can go with the 1619 narrative. And it's always that we've been bought and sold, chained and abused, always. And we see the abuse and the indignations continues with Laura Ingram saying to the world's greatest athlete, LeBron James, the world's greatest athlete in the history of the world, LeBron James, just shut up and dribble. And we see another white man, John Oliver, offer Supreme Court Justice Thomas Scott a million dollars to resign and say he would give him a million dollars a year because they put a price on Africans. They put a price on Africans. We see that's what happened with African people. It's a grave injustice. This city don't put any price on Africans. They don't spend any money in the African community. And if you ride up 34th Street and you see Fair Oaks and you see that area from what it used to be, it's nothing now. The whole area is dead. All up at Jackson Store, the roundabout that they put to deter traffic and all that, it's gone. This city have to respect Africans. They have to respect our reparations. We're owed it. And that's the respect we're deserving. We don't deserve these things that they're doing. That's just indignations. That have to stop. We need our reparations, and we need that to be paid in full. Thank you Thank very you. much, sir. Good morning, sir. Next speaker, please state your name. Bless you. Good morning. Good morning, Johnny Johnson, uh, a lifelong uh, resident generation here in the city of Tampa. Uh, I've been here to see all the growth and the uh, redevelopment of our city, which is well needed, look beautiful. But to continue to erase a history of a people and their landmarks is unacceptable. I come down here, I truly support the rebuild of Fair Oaks. As a young kid, I played there football and the team that was there at that specific time was the Bandits. We also had a big Bandits played at the stadium. Today, uh, the Wildcats play there. But to erase a name, I want to give you the definition from the Western Dictionary of name. A word or a phrase that constitutes the distinctive designation of a person or thing. Fair Oaks is its name. I come here to tell you, do not continue to erase our history. Right. That is a distinctive place. It stands. You're beautiful. We have rebuilt a lot of things and it retained its name. I do not accept East Tampa Recreational Complex. That's just another way of taking our history away. I grew up right across the street downtown in Central Park. I have nothing to show my kids. Anything that I experienced as a young kid, everything is totally being erased. Keep Fair Oaks name Fair Oaks. If it's not a big deal in the name, leave Fair Oaks alone. Rebuild the complex. Again, I'm down here in support of rebuilding Fair Oaks to make it modern and acceptable for our community, just like every part of the city of Tampa. It's about time that we had an upgrade. 
but during the upgrade, we do not have to destroy the history that's associated with Fair Oaks. I've been coming down here as one of the ones that initially petitioned and advocated to rebuild and not to uh, upgrade, just tear it down and rebuild it. Our kids deserve this here. It's so much history in Fair Oaks. It's none in East Tampa Recreation Center. It's nothing in that. It's so much. I see you give accommodations and talk about rich history. I also look in this uh, outline about historic. That is historic to the people that's been here. We're not implants. We've been here our entire life. Lee Fair Oaks name as Fair Oaks. I can have something to show my kids some place where I played at, and it still retains its name. Because if I call any of you out your name, you won't answer. Fair Oaks, I know where that's at. East Temple, Recreational Complex, I have no idea what that is. Thank you all for listening. I appreciate all of you guys. Thank you very much. Next speaker, yes, ma'am. Good morning. Good morning. Please state your name. My name is Colonel Retired Denise J. Anderson. And members of the council and members of the public, good morning. Good morning. Thank you for the privilege to stand before you today. In this Women's History Month, I stand to represent the 168,000 women veterans in the state of Florida. And as a note, of this 168,000, 42,000 are women over the age of 65, which is my demographic. If there are other women veterans in the, office, in the audience today, or if you know a woman veteran, please trust me to represent and stand with me at this time. And I just want to acknowledge Brigadier General Retired Carrie Nero, who is with us and with, is a part of the uh, Veterans Counseling Veterans Organization. I will not take much time today, as our interests and concerns are numerous. Military sexual assault trauma, mental health, homeless women veterans and, uh, and their children, and employment opportunities, and there are others. I will give you a brief testimony, and that is that women rarely talk about their service, because in most cases, we are neither seen, heard, or recognized, or believed. Retired in 2006 and uh, with 27 years of active federal service, I came to Tampa. And I stayed here for two years. I could not get a job. As you see me stand and represent, you've not seen my resume, you've not seen my curriculum vitae, but you see me as I stand here. So clearly I served this country, yet I could not get a job. I would love to have an opportunity to speak more in depth at another time on these concerns. But today, I thank you for hearing us, for seeing us, and for acknowledging us, and for serving us too, as you continue to serve the great citizens with the work that you're doing in this council. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Good morning. Next speaker, please. Hi, I'm Valerie Bullock from Ponce de Leon College here. I come to talk about item number 52 on the agenda, the reappointment of the um, Daniel Ross Myers by the mayor. And my main concern is, is he a sole source? Was there a committee came forward that his, um, his recommendation was so stellar? Or uh, is there no more ar architects around? Why do we keep having to reappoint him? And in my experience with the mayor, based on her experience and how she run the city of Tampa, it's not transparent and she lacks integrity. So anything goes. And another thing, item number 88, I'm all for building Fair Oaks, but it has to be the Fair Oaks we agreed upon. It was supposed to be two separate buildings on the property. We are not a dog. You just don't throw us the bone. You take this or you get take nothing. No, let's slow it down. Let's go back to the drawing board. This is what we agreed upon, and this is what we want. Don't give me anything. And another thing, if the price is too high, okay, let's sit back and wait. I'll wait to get what I want instead of just you throwing me anything and I accept it right now. It's not what we agreed upon. It was supposed to be two separate buildings. And now, according to the plans, it's just going to be one building. And it seems to be that way 
in, in my zip code because on Davis Island, they even have a dog park that's separate. So why do the senior citizens and the recreation facility need to be combined? That is not what was agreed upon. And in my opinion, I want it to be what we agreed upon, two buildings. And if we can negotiate another price so that we don't have to get bonds and my great-grandchildren have to pay for it, that's even better. We've been waiting this long for it to be built. Why rush now? And you're going to throw something together for us. That's not acceptable. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Next speaker, please say your name. Yes, my name is Heen Basil with the West Tampa Alliance. And I'm here to speak for the, the community in the CRA. The last CRA meeting we had, the community s spoke up saying that it's a fence around uh, the park on Albany and Maine, and they have a, having a problem with that. One of the reasons why they're having a problem with it is because these fences are going around these parks and they are not, nothing being done yet in the parks. But they really got upset about this one because it's not because uh, they're about to do some work on that park. It's because a bunch of people don't want to see black people in that park. We have a problem with true with the, with the homeless. But we also have a problem with that fence being around there because I used to be in that park, sitting in the park, just thinking to myself. And I also look in that park and see babies in that park. So it's a problem. I'm a member of the CRA, so I sit around the table and listen at things that I know shouldn't be done. And I had no doubt in my mind, if the community said it's something that they don't want in the CRA, they're supposed to be listening at and things are supposed to happen for them. Because this CRA is supposed to be for the community, but it seems like this thing is lopsided. It's not geared up right. It's not the first time I've said that. I've been here and said this before. It's something that our CRA and the chair have a problem with our community. He blocked things. He blocked Juneteenth. You know about that. He blocked the Unity Festival. You know about this. He started blocking pro uh, progress for the community as programs for our young babies, for our kids that fall through the cracks, can't make it happen for themselves. So we are looking for, well, I was looking for as, as a, a leader for the community, asking the CRA to come up with some programs for these babies that's coming out these, these schools and don't have nothing to do. They'll have a chance to build their own community. Plumbers, electricians, brick masons, all this could be done, but it'd be blocked, 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 blocked from someone sitting on the table around, and I'm looking at, it's not right. It's not right, and I know it's not right. So what we have to do, we're going to organize. They're talking about rallies. I'm not too much caring about rallies because it's not my thing. But what I do care about is the community, and we are taxpayers. These are taxpayers' money. You're taking taxpayers' money to put a fence around a, 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 a park that belongs to them. Thank you it's very not much. fair. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you. We're going to put a spotlight on this thing. And Thank you very much. Next speaker, yes, please state your name. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, happy Thursday. Good morning. Um, I would just like to say a few words. Um, I am Sally C. Lee with the Volunteer Missionary Society, and I'm getting ready to start a Give Me Five campaign to cover uh, the deposit on our resource center. And I'm still believing God for his favor. He is the way maker miracle worker, promise keeper, to do all things in life that seems to be a, impossible and all odds against us. But I know he will, and I will keep moving forward till I uh, 
be able to get what I want and you can donate to the um, Volunteer Missionary Society Penny Fund at 1920 East Hillsboro. And it's all for 5K so that we can open the door to our community resource and youth center. And the deposit is five. So we're looking to for everyone to give us 5,000 so we can open the doors to the resource center. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am, thank you very much. Next speaker, yes, ma'am, good morning. Please state your name. Good morning, council. Good morning. Gloria Jean Royster, Downtown River Arts District, District 5. Regarding agenda item 79, someone once said to me that the only black monument, his word, in Tampa is Rogers Park Golf Course. I said, no, there's also the Fortune Taylor Bridge. Happy Women's History Month. Thank you, Tampa. I look forward to today's second reading and adoption of Memorial Park Cemetery as a City of Tampa local historic landmark and black monument, if you will. Thank you, Tampa, and the Architectural Review Commission for appreciating, preserving, and honoring the full story of Tampa and all citizens who helped build it. May these ancestors and pioneers rest in peace. Congratulations to the community members for their efforts, largely led by women, including Noreen Copeland Miller and the Friends of Belmont Heights Memorial Park Cemetery, and Eileen Henderson and the Cemetery Society. Happy Women's History Month, and congratulations to the community of East Tampa on this landmark moment. Thank you. Thank you very much, ma'am. Yes, ma'am, good morning. Please state your name. Good morning, City Council. Sandra De Diego Sanchez. I'm here to talk on items 94 and 95, which are staff reports. Item number 94, I believe, was put was asked uh, by Councilman Hurtak and Hans Councilman Rivera about the size of garages, parking space sizes. As I looked through this report, I noticed a couple of things that stared at me. The first thing is there's no mention of the size with uh, uh, the length or the width of a car. How can you do a garage report if you don't even have the size of the car, an average size of a car? That's what, one of the things that is missing. They also give you a report on street parking spaces. Again, what does that have to do with the size of the garages that are needed for a residential cars to fit in? The other thing, there's a three page on solid waste, which we are interested in, that we make sure that we get the right size of trash cans that go in those spaces. But how can you make a responsible decision if you don't have the information you need to, to make that decision. All of this information, including the fact that the average car width is 7.5 feet and the length of a car is 15 feet, is available through the internet. You can either look at them by, by car or you can look at, there's a, another website that has all of the car's lengths and widths, not only by uh, feet, but by centimeters, millimeters, that sort of thing. So I would hope that you would get more information on that particular report before you move forward. The other one, Councilman Clendenin, I believe you were the one that asked for a report on the aisle style. And I notice on this, there is no recommendation of the actual width of the aisle, which was which, what was, was in question besides the size of the garages. In the first report, there was actually a picture of uh, one of the aisle designs that the garages faced each other, and they showed dents on the garage doors that people had backed in them because they were too narrow. That's been taken out of this report. It does not answer your, your question, which was particularly to compare it with, with Orlando, which they have done a beautiful job of that. 
Orlando uses a 22 foot uh, uh, width on that internal driveway, but it does not address what's really needed. So before these move forward, I ask that you ask for the, the correct information to help you make a responsible decision. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yes, ma'am. Next speaker, Dr. Williams. Good morning. Good morning. And please state your name, ma'am. Dr. Michelle Williams. Today is no different from when I stood at this podium just a week ago. To state that this city has a problem. You all acknowledged that problem in Resolution 568. So today, as I stand before you, it's not just my mere voice, but a resounding of each justice which is long overdue to the black community. We have stood at the crossroads of history for far too long, where the shadows of oppression, and some call it Afrophobia, cast by policies and procedures that loom large over the souls of the black community. Your actions have not merely inflicted harm, they have perpetrated a legacy of suffering, abuse that cannot be ignored or dismissed. Resolution 568 was passed in 2020. The annals of our nation's struggles, the names of those wrong are etched in the fabric of our collective consciousness. They cry out for redress, for the righting of the wrongs that have festered for far too long. Your creative suffering, as Dr. King wrote, your Afrophobic policies and procedures have shackled the spirits of liberty, relegating our brothers and sisters to the chains of injustices. Resolution 568 was passed in 2020. But let us be clear, the time for reckoning has arrived. We shall not falter, we shall not yield, for the arc of the moral universe bends towards justice. And it is our solemn duty to ensure that it does not swiftly and without hesitation be withheld any longer. Your attempts to evade accountability shall not stand for the truth shall shine forth like a beacon in the darkest of nights. Resolution 568 was passed in 2020. As we embark upon this journey toward justice, let us remember that the words of the great man whose legacy continues to inspire us all, an injustice anywhere is a threat to justice everywhere. The echoes of the words reverberate through the chambers of our conscience, compelling us to stand firm in the face of adversity, to fight for what is right, and to ensure that the flame of justice burns brightly for all. In the words of Johnny Cochran, he said, if it does not fit, you must acquit. But in this case, the evidence fits all too well that the verdict is clear. The time for justice is now. Each of you, along with the city attorney, Ms. Andra Selman, have been served a notice of intent to sue the city of Tampa for the slavery, the policies and procedures that have impacted the black community. Thank you very much, ma'am. Next speaker. Yes, sir. Good morning, council. Good, morning, Good to sir. see you all today. My name is Fred Hearns, and I grew up in historic Belmont Heights. Uh, the boundaries for historic Belmont Heights on the north Hillsborough Avenue on the south, I-4, on the east, 30th Street, and on the west, 15th Street. Those are the boundaries of historic Belmont Heights. And I, I lived in Belmont Heights from the time I attended kindergarten until I graduated from college. So I know that neighborhood pretty well. Pretty soon you're going to be receiving an invitation to the second annual historic Belmont Heights reunion. It's going to be the first Saturday in May. Last year, Councilwoman Henderson joined us for that event, and you're all going to be invited this year to come out and celebrate our history for that neighborhood. There are so many people, the list is so long, who grew up in that neighborhood, who attended school there, who worked in that community, and we want to keep that history alive and preserve the name Historic Belmont Heights. The other thing I want to mention, uh, and there are two other subjects very briefly, Memorial Park Cemetery. I stand here to support local historic designation of Memorial Park Cemetery. 
which sits right in the middle of that neighborhood I just talked about, historic Belmont Heights. We appreciate the progress that's being made there. The city has stepped up to the plate and done the right thing, and we encourage you to do the same thing. You may know that I've been doing historic black history walking tours for several years in Tampa. We now have a black history walking tour in Memorial Park Cemetery. So we're looking forward to growing in our support of that effort as you support it also. The last thing I want to mention is Fair Oaks Park and the work that's going to be done there. All of the magnificent improvements, the tremendous amount of resources, money that, that the city is pouring in, but also important is to preserve the name Fair Oaks. When I was growing up, if I told somebody I lived in East Tampa, they said, where in East Tampa? Belmont Heights, Jackson Heights, I mean, where? So names mean everything. Please continue to support the name Fair Oaks Park. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Thank you very much. Yes, sir. Next speaker, please state your name. Good morning. Thank you. Good morning, Council. Thank you, Mr. Chair. Joseph Citro, 33611 for the record. Uh, first of all, thank you very much in hopes that you are going to give a special permit to the Rough Riders for the St. Patty's Day Parade held in downtown Tampa on March 16th. Four long years ago, two then council members and myself went to Fair Oaks. We met with the community in a dilapidated building. Roof was leaking, rat infested. We listened to the community. Four long years ago, a new rec center was requested. I know that there was concerns about legal matters with leases and purchases of land. But with the rising costs of building materials and construction costs, carpe diem, Council, seize the day. Now is the time to ensure what was started four long years ago is brought to fruition for this community. Fair Oaks was the name of the complex then. It should be the name of the complex now. Seize the moment, Council. This is no joke. Thank you. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, ma'am. Good morning, Bishop Patty. Please state your name. Good morning, Council. Bishop Michelle B. Patty. I would like to start off with the marker for Memorial Park. Uh, it's very personal for me because I have a brother that is buried in an unmarked grave at that cemetery. So I'm praying that we go forth with that. Secondly, I'm here about Fair Oaks. Four years ago when Council Masitra was on the council, I, along with Mr. J. Johnson, we stood right here at this podium and urged and encouraged you all to build Fair Oaks, rebuild Fair Oaks. Now, the question some might say, why not wait? If you look at going to the grocery store, you see everything is going up. Nothing is coming down. The price of this park actually has gone. It's not what it was stated. It has come in under budget. But I wouldn't care if it was a million dollars. It is due to the community of East Tampa. We have beautiful parks all over the city of Tampa. And what some people might not realize, bonds are used for uh, projects such as this every day. So your children and you are paying taxes, so why not pay for something that would benefit the African American community? You say, what's the name? What's in the name? A lot is in the name. It's historical that's in the name. When I named my children, it had value in their name. And so this is what we're saying, historical Bama height uh, Fair Oaks. When I looked at this, I thought it was a typo, but uh, talking about East Tampa. East Tampa what? So it seemed like Fair Oaks was okay as long as it was a, a dilapidated building. Now that we're saying we're going to have something marvelous, something spectacular, not African Americans, you don't deserve to have your name attached to this project. That's wrong, wrong, wrong. So we're here uh, saying let's move forward. There's no reason for any more delays. The project has gone. Uh, the train has moved from the track. Now we want to know the date and time that dirt is going to be dug up to move forward with Fair Oaks. It's going to be beneficial 
to this East Tampa, not just to East Tampa, but to the city as a whole. So black folks are saying today, we deserve this, we demand this, we want it, and when we want it, we want it now. So thank you so much. Uh, let's move forward with Fair Oaks. God bless you all. Yes, ma'am. Thank you very much. Next speaker, <coughs> sir, ma'am. Oh, pass. yes, sir. Please state your name. I'm sorry, I've been David. I'm coming from Silver Springs, and I'm here today to talk about Resolution 568. All right? So a resolution acknowledging Tampa's history, which contributed to a complex system of racially motivated discrimination against African Americans. Formally apologizing to all former and current African American residents of the city of Tampa for any and all past participation in the damage that shameful history has caused. I couldn't tell you, it's not just a shameful history. It's a shameful present. It's a shame. First of all, I can't even get an agenda. They say it's only one paper. So speaking to an item of the agenda, I would like to. I would like to talk about how it's a shame how y'all continue to damage the young people because that's who don't have a voice. Because in our neighborhood, we don't have no education, which you said in this resolution you wanted to do, but we still ain't got nothing after four years. It took you four years just to address talking about getting a committee, and now we got to wait until April 4th. But guess what, 2024, we on your neck about this resolution because we are still feeling the damage, the continuing, the debilitating, the economic, the educational, the health adversities. From what? The damage that you caused, that you acknowledged. Okay, you acknowledged you pulled the knife out of our back, but where is the healing? We need the, the healing process needs to begin. This is urgent. Uh, but because it didn't happen to your community, it's not you all ain't concerned. Y'all not concerned because it didn't happen to y'all. Y'all didn't have to experience this. What? What you did, the sharecropping, the convict lease, and the Jim Crow laws. Why do every other community get support before the people that went through this? The unequal education, disproportionate treatment at the hands of the criminal justice system that we still, that we still feel it today. Still feel it today. Why my brothers can't get a job? Because they got charged with crimes. Because constitutionally slavery still exists. That's why I got all the police in our neighborhoods. Because you want us all back on the plantation. But why my brother can't get a job? Because y'all don't want to move on this. Y'all don't want a committee to do what? To eliminate the, y'all don't want us to rehabilitate. Y'all don't want us to re-enter. What in the community? We was the only ones affected by policies. We was the only ones affected by black codes. Y'all made a profit. We need some policies that we gonna profit. Y'all got trillions in the bank. We know what the mayor doing. We know what you doing. You in the back, you out here pr approving millions. Millions. Y'all got trillions in your budget. And you wanna talk about increasing y'all salaries? In 24 years, we done been here over 400 years. And we can't even get a committee? A committee to address the damage? I hate y'all. I hate y'all. No, I hate you because y'all don't love us. Thank you very much. Y'all don't sir. give us nothing but love. Y'all don't much, give us sir. nothing but hate. Thank you very much. And you still ain't got no committee. Thank you very April much. April 4th, sir. looking forward to seeing the mayor address this. Because we paper, need please. things. Thank you very much. Hallelujah. Yes, yes, sir. Good morning. Please state your name. Good morning. Good morning, sir. My name is Pepper Frank William, located 1112 East Scott Street. Uh, Paradise Missionary Baptist Church. You know, I can understand the young man being frustrated the way he are uh, because uh, there's no justice here for what y'all call niggas. There's no justice here for niggas. No justice at all. I've been coming here for over 40 years. It ain't been no changes. It ain't wasn't nothing up, up here but white men and, and wasn't no women, wasn't no black women, no black men, so nothing. But glory be to God. Thank you, Jesus. God has given us a chance to live long enough to see something changing. But it's not changing in our favor. It's only changing in your favor. And that's not right. You got all those cesspools out there what y'all call retention farm. You could build everything out there. Be a school, be a nice home, 
Now they're trying to take my home now. They care less about us. But you should, you got to care about yourself. And, you know, give praises to God Almighty. He's going to make everything all right. You all think you all got us down. But when you think you got us down, God lifts us up another way. He do it every time. And this is what it's all about. My church right there on Scott Street, I had over 30 years ago. Now the white folks want to take that. My museum was right there in the church. One of the most fantastic museums we ever had. They want to take that, trying to destroy that. And now you got a, a guy come around to me, told me he wanted to buy. So I was going to sell it to him for $500,000. And how come they move out the neighborhood? Because there's no justice in the Central Park for black folks or Bell Mahai. So really, I wanted to go out and Bell Mahai and start up something new. Paradise, remember this name, Paradise Missionary Baptist Church. That's my church. I'm the founder of it, I'm the organizer of it, and I'm the one that purchased the church from Allen Temple AME Church. Now they want to take that from us. They want to take everything they think black folk have. They want to take it over there in Central Park. You know, the first people that was over there, what they call a scrub, was slaves. It was a slave. And, uh, and now, now the white folks done built it up and put high rise in there. Now they want to call it something different. But it's still a slave camp, as far as I can see it. And that's the way y'all ought to look at it. Look at the truth. Don't worry about what, what color a person is or where they went to school. Like, that makes no damn difference. Treat us all like human beings. And we'll be pleased the rest of our life. Thank you very God much, God bless sir. you. Yes, sir. Yes, ma'am. Next speaker. Good morning. Please state your name. Good morning, Connie Burton. Trauma living in this city have you screaming and shouting. Even when you think you're in a same in a same present of mind, because of you're look, we're looking at the same issues every day, every year, hoping coming down here speaking to you all that we will be able to move forward. It has become like the model for black people, something is better than nothing. Something is better than nothing. Something is better than nothing when we look at the historical uh, memorial cemetery and we see a temporary fencing when the CRA put money back five years ago for a permanent structure, can't get it. Something is better than nothing when the community asks and requests for two structure in Fair Oaks. Now we get one, now the developers get all the money, and now we are saying accept that. Something is better than nothing. Something is better than nothing when we make a, just a simple request when you talk about the pipes program and all of what I thought would be jobs and opportunity for young people to hook up with the unions, apprentice program, send a request over there and say, hey, let's find out who's, where can we send our young people for employment opportunities? I got to piecemeal, I got to pull it together like this so I could try to figure it out. Who to send it to? Where to tell young people to go and look for a job? Who got the most jobs? Who out of that Pikes program, item number 92. Some of those companies don't even live in the city or the state. Where would our people gain employment opportunity? A $2 billion project and all we're doing is being sightseers. When our men have those jobs, all they're doing is holding the flag, controlling traffic. That's what y'all expect us to continue to beg and bend and beg and bend. Mm -hmm. We are sick and tired of being sick and tired. All right. We want what we want. We are taxpayers. This city should not be able to move forward because you have one or two black contractors on the project and it's okay. It is not okay. We all deserve to eat. Our young people, from the drug wars to now schools that don't have real apprentice programs that we had with Middleton and Blake, they are lost in our community. Right. We are simply 
tired of feeding them to a system that looks at them as a new slave crop. Do something about the Pikes program. It should not move any further until they can stand up here and tell you how many people from this community are being employed. Thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, ma'am. Next speaker, please state your name. Good morning, Council. Eileen Henderson. Good morning, ma'am. I did not intend to speak until later today. I'm sure you all know why, for item 79. However, Listening to the citizens and what they've brought forth, I was compelled to speak. I was compelled to speak because I represent history in Tampa. You all know that. I fight for that. It's very important to me. And when I hear that we're going to try to change history again by changing a name, Seems insignificant to some people. But I'll tell you what, they tried to do that in Belmont Heights. And I stand here today as the interim president for historic Belmont Heights Neighborhood Association because there was a group of people that tried to wipe it away. How fortunate am I that they allow me to represent them? I have learned, I have listened, I will never understand their plight, never. But I will fight for it every chance I get. A name is important, it's who we are. Don't change the name. Fair Oaks, that's the name. No more discussion, Fair Oaks. Thank you. Yes ma'am, thank you very much. Yes ma'am, would you like to speak? Good morning, ma'am. Please state your name. Good morning. My name is Black Rose. I am here mostly to lift up the voices that have already spoken. This community has said what they need time and time again. This community has been begging for years to just be heard and respected. And as the representatives of this community, as the people who are supposed to represent our interests, not the interests of the mayor, not the interests of the contractors, but our the citizens' interests, I just want to encourage you to be on the right side of history, to stop postponing what needs to be done to do it, to stop putting the blame on somebody else or putting the responsibility on somebody else. I just want to repeat these words from Lift Every Voice and Sing. Lift every voice and sing till the earth and heaven ring. Ring with the harmonies of liberty. Let our rejoicing rise high as the light listing skies. Let it resound loud as the rolling sea. Sing a song full of the faith that the dark past has taught us. Sing a song full of the hope that the present has brought us. Facing the rising sun of our new day begun, let us march on till victory is won. Stony the road we trod, bitter the chasing rod, felt in the days when hope unborn has died, yet with a steady beat we have, we have not our weary feet come to the place for which our fathers sighed. We have come over the way that with tears has been watered. We have come treading our path through the blood of the slaughtered out from the gloomy past, till now we stand at last, where the white gleam of our bright star is cast. We will change the course that this city has taken. I hope you guys will be on the right side of that. Thank you. Thank you very much. Ma'am, please say your name. You will be the last speaker. Um, good morning, Stephanie Pointer. Um, the theme today really should be champagne taste and a beer pocketbook. Um, I, I'm going to start with this one because I've got the I've got the pictures. Um, this is number 89, the Bayshore pumping station in the CIP in the budget. It is 6.4 million, both places. But then, in the agenda for this week, it was 12 million. But when you open that nifty document, guess what? It says 17 million. Okay, so. 
you guys approved 6.4 million. Now we're up to 17. That's 10 million additional dollars on this project. Where'd it come from? Where's it supposed to come from? I know at my house, when I give my daughter $64, 6.4 million, whatever, and she asks for another 100, whatever, she wants more money because she can't get what she wants for that price, I tell her to go figure it out. She better do some new math. The other problem is McKay Bay, number 39. McKay Bay is a $108 million project, okay? And we've got several things on this agenda that are scope creep. When you remodel a bathroom and it costs $108 million, are you going to be paying later $144,000 for a caulking job? Or are we going to pay for that as part of the deal? I mean, I don't understand how much money we're going to spend there, considering the fact that 5.5 million of that, and yes, I'm gonna keep harping on this forever and ever, amen, because it was supposed to go to affordable housing and we got screwed, okay? The uh, number 29 is double the original contract. Does that mean we got double the materials, double the labor? There's no definition in that. And number eight, nine, 10, 32, 33, 35, 34, 36, 43, 44, and I'm sure there's a couple more. Mr. Bishop did the math, said it was about $10 million. I'm gonna trust him because he's a smart guy. I didn't do the math. But that much in vehicles on one freaking agenda? So like $10 million were the vehicles. Again, big chunk of those for solid waste. Solid waste, who needed that 5.5 million, a hell of a lot more than we needed affordable housing. Again, the bottom line is, is all this stuff in the budget? Where are the line items from the budget? We keep every week, this is a really, really ugly agenda with a bunch of money being spent. And the question is, who in the hell is going to pay for it? Are we going to ask for a budget increase again next year? I mean, seriously, who is keeping up with this? I can't keep up with it. And I read this stuff every week. I read the entire budget for the city of Tampa. And this stuff is going down an ugly, ugly road. You can't make that truck last another couple of years. Thank you you can't much. do that. Thank, Thank you, you. Have a good day. All right. That concludes public comment. At this time, we're going to open up the public hearings five and six. Uh, if anybody is going to be speaking on items five or six, please stand, raise your right hand, and we will swear you in. These are both quasi-judicial hearings. And Madam Clerk, if you can swear the folks in. I don't have anybody registered, so I would assume everybody is here. If you're here to speak on item five and six, Oh, you do? Okay, let's just take a moment and... May I get a motion to open five and six? Motion from Councilman Miranda, second from? Vier. Councilman Vieira, all in favor? Aye. Yes, ma'am? Oh. <coughs> yes. Well, a motion to open... You, you we already wait. did. We already did. We already did the motion. Council, it was voted. Councilman okay. Vieira, uh, I'm sorry, Miranda made the motion. Vieira seconded, and the, mo the hearings are open. Thank you. Yes. All right. Let's just wait a second if anybody else is coming in. <coughs> <coughs> All right. If you are here to speak on items five or six, please stand, raise your right hand. Are there more folks coming in? Is that, are more folks coming in? No, all right. For five and six, if you're here to speak on these hearings, please stand, raise your right hand, we'll swear you in. Please raise your right hand, do you swear for the testimony that you are about to provide is the truth and nothing but truth? All right, Mr. yes, sir. If I can, uh, and, and perhaps people can refresh my recollection, it appears that this was here, and staff is present to talk about procedurally this was heard on February 15th, is that correct? correct? And what happened was it was a 3-3 vote um, and with uh, council members Miranda, Henderson, and Ver Hertak voting uh, uh, no and, um, and uh, council member Carlson was absent at vote. So I believe- No, sir, it says Miranda and Hertak, no, that, Henderson is absent. That's what my agenda says. That, that was that? first reading. Um, Dana Crosby, call your city okay, attorney's okay. office. June 18th was your first reading and that is correct, sir. Okay. 
So, oh, so where do we and stand now? And second reading, um, the, the city council attorney is correct. It was on second reading in February. It ended on a 3-3 tie vote with Miranda Henderson and Hertek voting no, Carlson being absent. So automatically, it was reopened and continued to this date, pursuant to council's rules. And quite frankly, the point is now that uh, Councilman Carlson um, is going to be asked whether he has reviewed the record and whether he is prepared to vote. And if he has any questions, people are prepared are to answer those questions. Um, otherwise, then it would be a motion uh, to close, uh, read the title, um, and uh, depending on what the uh, uh, decision is, then take a vote pursuant to a full council being present. Councilmember Carl. Yeah, I was here for the first reading. Um, the second reading, I was out sick, but I watched the video and I, uh, the, I read the file and the staff reached out to me and I didn't have any questions, so I'm ready to vote. Thank you. Then, uh, are, do you have any questions of staff or uh, anyone present? Can Councilmember Carlson, are you prepared then? No. Okay, motion thank you. Close. Motion to close. We have a motion to close from Councilmember Clendenin. Do we have a second? Second from Councilmember Miranda. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, I'm looking here. Uh, who voted no? Uh, Councilman Carlson, are you comfortable reading this? Wait. Yes, Mr. Shelby? Are you, well, do you wish to? Do you wish, do you to wish if not, I can pass it down to? Do you wish to read it? I can. Okay. If you would like to read item number five, sir. Second reading and adoption. Um, to move item number five, file number REZ 22-61, ordinance being presented for second reading adoption, ordinance approving a special master magistrate's report and recommendation rezoning property in the general vicinity of 3602 North 50th Street and 3501 North 46th Street in the city of Tampa, Florida, more particularly described in section two from zoning district classification RM16, residential multifamily to PD plan development providing effective date. We have a motion from council member Carlson, second council member Vieira, please record your vote. Motion carried with Miranda Henderson and Hertek voting no. Thank you very much. The motion therefore passes and it'll get signed. Thank you very much. Item number six, we also had a uh, tie vote with a member of council being absent. Mr. <coughs> Shelby, would you like to? You, is, your, is your mic on? I'm sorry. Uh, the applicant is not available to come today? Yeah, she sent an email that she had a family issue and requested a continuance to the next available um, meeting. So it's at council's discretion whether you want to choose the 28th March 28th is very busy. Yeah. How about uh, April 4th? Does that look like a lighter day? April 4th, we do have two other review hearings, just to keep that in mind. All right. How about April 18th? This was the three. Yeah. April 18th. Sure. All right. May I have a motion to continue this to April? So second. What? Yes, we will do that. I'm sorry. Well, I'm sorry. Just a reminder, she is not present. Uh, the clerk, obviously, you will notify her of the date and time. So what we need is a, a, a if you just told before, um, what we need for the motion for a continuance is a date and time and location, a date and time certain, so we can communicate that. Thank yes, you. Yes, ma'am. Council Member Hurtak? Again, I think this was just simply a... 3-3 three, three vote, I think it would go just as quickly as this. All right. Do you want so, to do April 4th? Yeah, I don't think we need to change it because I don't think we're hearing any. We're so going to do any big hearing. So why not change just, what? Why, why, why not hear it today? Because well, your applicant is not present. Would you like April 4th? Uh, well, that's the question. Uh, I, it depends how it goes. If you vote in a way that is, that is not acceptable to the applicant and the applicant is not present, you have a little bit of a problem. I know, so we can take it to April 4th, not today. I'm just saying sooner than the April 18th. Yes, sir, Council Member Clendenin. I have a question for the attorney. So on, on this issue, so we've already heard this. Yeah, I watched it. So is there, would the applicant, wouldn't we just, wouldn't we just open and close it? Would the applicant have an opportunity to speak at this hearing? Actually, n not unless there was a question by the person who was absent as to whether they well, that, want to be So wouldn't it be to, prudent for us to ask the person that was absent if she had any questions, if she's already, if she's, if she's reviewed the record and watched it, and if she doesn't have any questions, we could just move forward? Except for the <coughs> fact that my understanding is you had a request of an applicant for a continuance. Okay. If you wish to go forward, that's council's pleasure and we can see where it ends up. Well, we could deny the continuance. And just you get- We could deny the request of the continuance. 
Okay, I, 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 I mean, it's, yeah, it's, it's April fourth. Who, who wishes to continue to April fourth? Second. We have a motion from Councilmember Vier. Do we have a second? Second from Councilmember Hertak. April fourth, nine thirty a.m. Three fifteen. I'm sorry. Ten a.m. April fourth, ten a.m. Three fifteen is Kennedy Boulevard, third floor, Tampa, Florida, Old City Hall. We have a motion and we have a second. All in favor of the continuance to April fourth? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Are we good, ma'am? Okay. Yes, Ms. Johnson Velez. Susan Johnson Velez, Legal Department. I apologize. I was trying to catch someone's attention before you voted. Um, the last time the applicant was here on February 15th when it had to be continued and council set it as the first item or one of the first items after public comment as opposed to a time certain so that she wouldn't have to sit for potentially four or five hours again. So I was just going to remind that council we have of that. Yeah. Should I amend my motion for that, or yeah. I, I mean, no I mean, she didn't come today, didn't so come. I kind of feel like um, that was. Okay. Yeah. yeah, let's leave it okay. as okay. is. Thank you very much. All right, all in favor for the continuance, we voted, but just to be safe, aye. aye. Any opposed? Thank you very much. <laughs> all right, per the request of Councilmember Henderson, we're going to talk about Fair Oaks. Oh, okay. Fair Oaks, <laughs> item number eighty-eight. Yes, uh, I'll be right back. Go ahead, sir. So, the, uh, in speaking with you, Mr. Mulkey, um, you need about 10 minutes for the presentation, and then I'm going to go to council members five minutes each. We're going to keep the timer on. My question is maybe one or two very brief, so I have very brief comments, and we'll take it from there. Thank you very much. I'll be right back. Thank go you, ahead, Chair. Thank you, Chair. Good morning, council. Good morning, community. It is my distinct pleasure to uh, share the design and the uh, contract proposal for first reading for the East Tampa Recreation Complex at Fair Oaks. And for the transcript, would you state your name? Oh, please? Tony Mulkey, City of Tampa Parks and Recreation Director. Thank you. So this, this process started back in late 2019 with a, an initiative to improve Fair Oaks Park. That initiative has grown through the community input as well as opportunity to acquire parcels around the area to create a much larger project, uh, utilizing the natural features of Carrington Pond and developing uh, both a senior center and a community recreation center. Um, I, I'm pleased to say that I'm standing before council that after the public input process that the majority of the amenities that were identified through the community input process have been able to be incorporated into this project and we made budget we're on target so i'm going to hand this over for the detailed description we brought in the model here uh, we have the contractor uh, skanska usa who is going to be who was awarded the design build contract back in 2022 uh, they've gone through that design phase and now we're ready to construct uh, Skanska has an extensive history with the city of Tampa. They constructed Curtis Hickson Park, Riverfront Park, and more recently the St. Petersburg Pier, as well as Coachman Park and the Sound over in Clearwater. So with that, I will uh, yield to Skanska to run you through the details of the project. Good morning, City Council members, City Council Chair. Um, my name is uh, Chuck Jablin, Senior Vice President of Skanska, lifelong resident of Tampa and builder, uh, as he suggested, over 14 parks in the state of Florida. And today it's my privilege, my honor, never been more proud after 52 years in the construction business to present and work so hard for so many people so deserving at Fair Oaks. So having said that, I brought along today, if you could step back just to here so council can see, this is what Fair Oaks looks like right now, uh, looking from the uh, north, uh, northeast corner to the southeast corner where Old Penny, uh, Penny Saver was listed. And right over here is right at 56, 57 uh, uh, square, 5,700 square feet of youth center and an old worn out basketball court and uh, baseball fields you can't drive a 16 penny nail in. You can put Five of those youth centers in Wait, wait, you have to go back to the microphone, sir. Yeah, it won't pick you it up. You can put, um, thank you. You can put 
five of those youth centers inside 34,000 square feet of a shared uh, youth and senior center. We have everything that you can put in a park on 10.25 acres, pickleball courts, uh, exterior basketball courts, picnic shelters, 14 shade structures, 26 benches, um, a youth sports field uh, out of uh, the new state-of-the-art uh, artificial turf with full underdrain, all new infrastructure system, a pedestrian plaza, shuffleboard courts, outdoor patios for the seniors, uh, a program that we heard loud and clear from the Fair Oaks residents, over 300 requests. We gathered that information, and not only did we get all of their requests in, but we got more than that. We are under budget, we are ready to go, and as uh, Michelle Patty said, we're ready uh, for your permission to move forward. I'll hand it off to council for questions, please. That's it. We, we will keep it brief and, and respond to anything that you Thank you very much. I'll, I'll kick Thank it you. off very briefly. What is the EBO participation? Because there were questions of 30%, then I heard 23%, then I asked uh, um, a gentleman on, on staff, and they said that it is in writing that it is at 30%. Do you have the answer to that question? Yes. yes. Good morning, council members. Bertha Mitchell. And we were very careful with our calculations for this project. Uh, it's very important to the community. And we want to create more stories as Stephen Bridges, who was the engineer, the project engineer at HANA. So we calculated a goal of 30%. Thank you very much. And that is in writing? It is. Okay, so there's no modifications to it, no, well, you know, it, it is 30%. It is 30%. Okay, thank you very much. That answers my question. Second, this is a very exciting and beautiful project. I, I can't wait to go with my family there. Uh, you, sir, many of you were there, gave me a, a, a tour of this model, very, very impressive. I asked a lot of questions regarding the seniors, regarding ADA accessibility, regarding future growth, regarding, I asked a lot of questions and you answered everything. The question has come up regarding the name of the complex. And I understand the passion behind it regarding Fair Oaks, leaving it as Fair Oaks, because in the time that I've been here, uh, nine years almost, uh, we had the discussion about what used to be Fortune Street Bridge. And in 1968, 69, it was renamed Laurel Street Bridge. What was Laurel? And I asked the question, is it a Laurel Oak tree? What was Laurel? Why take away the name Fortune, which was Madam Fortune Taylor? And we restored the name of that bridge to Madam Fortune Taylor Bridge, or Fortune Taylor Bridge, uh, a very important, significant uh, individual in this community. We don't want to modify history. We don't want to change names. If the people in the community have always known it as Fair Oaks, we should leave it as Fair Oaks. People spoke loud and clear. Uh, I love historic preservation. I love Tampa's history. But we need to you know, be sensitive to that. If people have always known it, just like when I was a kid, I lived, and I still live near there, Horizon Park. Horizon Park was renamed Al Lopez Park. Who was Al Lopez? A legend. Look up, I'm not going to go into the story. But I remember that park was, it's a big park, it's still there, very simple. But when I was a kid, they built a brand new playground. I want to say maybe 30 years ago. And I remember how excited I was because the news was there and all these kids were going out running to see this new playground. That was a huge deal for me as... I don't know, a 10-year-old boy, 9-year-old boy, that is nothing compared to what is being built here. So my compliments to the uh, Skanska, to the folks behind it, to the engineers, because this is, I mean, this is truly spectacular and it's something that we should all be very, very proud of. Thank you very much. Councilmember Miranda, would you like to? I'm just going to go down the road. Yeah, can I, I just want to mention one thing. It's back. We have a Something here's back from the skate park. And there used to be a Belmont Heights Park, there used to be a Jackson Heights Park, and there was a Fair Oaks Park. Okay, no, I just want to Going back into the 40s and the 50s. Not that I'm that old. My mind is. So it was a great opportunity to play with kids. And that's what life is all about. It's about kids. Kids are the ones that determine what's going to happen tomorrow and the next day and the day after. 
But in order to be a kid, in order to understand what's going on, you have to live it. You have to feel it. You have to understand it, and you're going to have to want it. And I believe it beats all the criteria, the criteria of yesterday, today, tomorrow, and for the future. When you have something that is a magnet that draws not only the young, but also the not so young, and it has a cooperation of all coming together in one area, you have a lot more than a dream. You're more than likely setting a new future. You see, as a kid, I remember going to Orange Grove during the summer session and sitting down playing with shells and making ornaments and things of that nature. I also remember not even knowing one word of English when I went to school at Orange Grove. If it wasn't for one teacher named Ms. Ingram, I would more likely never have learned a word of English. But that hope and that desire on someone, somewhere, that helps not one, but many at one time, is what life is all about. Because you're only young once. And if you don't learn it that first time, the problem is you're going to have a life of monumental. In all my experiences, I got one place, and that's called Cascading Park. That really doesn't exist anymore like it was. There's no more Little League field there. The big field that uh, the professional people would play in is gone. On the north side, I believe that fence is still there. The softball diamonds is still there. I remember seeing some of the most fantastic plays and teams play, like the Clearwater Bomber, the Robesto Cardinals. The Clearwater Bombers were world champions. I remember Hundley and Hunter. And I also remember Thompson and individuals that could throw that ball so hard underhand that it was much more difficult to hit than a baseball and queer. So these are the things that I see and I remember. And in order to understand the past, you have to live it. Because if you just hear it, that's somebody else's dream that they saw, not yours. And this is a case where some young men and women, and then some young, not so young men and women, are going to, one, live their dream, and the other one start realizing that it is a dream. But the dreams don't last forever. You only get what people teach you and what you see with your eyes, even though you may not understand what's going on at two and three or four years old, but you become a person without realizing that. And that would set you apart from somebody else. Like Johnny Carson would say, there's a fork in the road. Which fork are you taking? The right one or the wrong one? Well, this one has an idealistic that you have two rings in that part. No matter which way you go, right or left, you have a chance to learn more and be somebody that meets your expectations and exceeds them. I didn't get where I'm at by myself. I didn't learn much in school because the people would teach me when I was in elementary school what life was really about. And not just because you're young, you can go to the park every day and have a nice time. That's fine. But they teach you much more, and that's what I hope happens here. That you see a change in your own neighborhood, and you say, what happened here? Where, where do I fit in? Because there was never a change there. So these are the things that inspired me to do something else. Realize that you don't have a dream unless you take one step forward. So you take that dream and you go backwards. Thank Brothers you, and sisters, you ain't coming out. Thank Thanks you, sir. Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. Councilman Vieira. Thank you very much, Mr. Chair. And, and yeah, I mean, to me, this is, we met a couple days ago, and, and I, I said it then and I'll say it now. This is amazing. It's amazing to think the journey this project has made on council. It, it's gone through so many different variations. And, and I remember when it was first brought up, uh, my recollection in the budget in 2019, 
uh, by then Councilman Goods uh, to get a couple million dollars in the budget for this. Uh, then the council members would, would champion this. So many, um, uh, Mayor Jane Castor and the administration, I think, has done a wonderful job in championing this. And now we have uh, Council uh, and I and, and Councilman Henderson is doing such a great job in, in, in championing this as well. So for me, this is really amazing. All of my questions were answered in our meeting. I'm not going to you know, pour through them, et cetera, for the sake of time. There's so much there that is good. I know there's disability access there on the playground, which is so important. There's great events, event space. Um, something that I mentioned that I'd like to see when this gets up and running is maybe looking at some of the, you know, rooms and, and naming them after, you know, some great historical figures in East Tampa, talking about people like Robert Saunders and, and uh, uh, Garland Stewart and so many others who are so important there. Um, you know, one of the things I always like to mention whenever it comes to East Tampa um, uh, uh, recreation uh, uh, necessities is I remember not long ago reading the old Kerner Commission report from, I guess it was 1968, uh, that President Johnson had done after the uh, disturbances after the shooting of Martin Chambers. Um, and uh, Tampa got a space in that report. And one of the things that they mentioned, that the commission mentioned about Tampa, about uh, the East Tampa, was that there needed to be more recreational activities, uh, more things like this. So that's really what's amazing about this is that this has really, really been a long time coming. Uh, I was especially touched by talking to the folks from Skanska uh, who, who, you know, the pride in what you've done, that when you say that this is one of the, the things that you've been proudest to work on, you know, we, we share that pride, we see that pride, and it's, it's something to talk to the members of the community to go out to these community meetings, to talk to moms and dads and grandparents and young kids who all they want is a shot for their kids. Um, and, and they know that it begins in places like this. Uh, you know, to me, this is about respect. This is about dignity. This is making sure that places like East Tampa, like Sulphur Springs, obviously this is East Tampa, but get the respect, respect and dignity that they deserve. Um, that they get, that this part of Tampa gets institutions and places that are 100% a class act, that are gonna be as worthy and as amazing as the hardworking families who make up East Tampa and this community and its history as well as its future. You know, I know we'll be talking later on the name change or on the naming, et cetera, and, and I'll give thoughts on it. I mean, for me, it's important to listen to community, but my main um, rule in this is WWFHD, what would Fred, what would Fred Hearns do? So I, I pay a lot of attention to Fred Hearns on that issue. But again, just wanted to say that I really, really appreciate um, your hard work and your sincerity and just your um, earnestness in dealing with this. This is a very, very special project and program for a community that appreciates it, that wants it, that needs it, and that will benefit from it. So thank you guys and God bless you. Thank you very much. Councilmember Clendenin. Good morning, everybody. And I, and, uh, and I appreciate uh, the opportunity to have previewed this project. And um, it was uh, very enlightening to see the work that had been done and how much of the community input that was received and incorporated into the final design of the project. So kudos to everybody that was involved in the planning and the design aspects of it. Um, I'm going to take a, a couple of different spins on this. Um, part of it is, is the money. I know that there's a lot of concern about the money and, and bonding. What I would like to see us do as we move forward, because we have we have future opportunity to uh, find, uh, we're, you know, obviously we're, some of this is going to have to be bonded, but I would encourage this, the administration and the council to look for ways and find uh, savings in our budget, not just this year, but the next two cycles, to be able to reduce the cost of bonding, This uh, looking at the CRAs, to see if there's additional expenditures that could be uh, funneled from the CRA to reduce the cost of bonding, which of course, you know, cash versus credit at the, at the interest rates that we're paying will ultimately pay dividends to everybody, including the taxpayers that live within this community. This is, a, it is a tremendous uh, project. It's, uh, and thanks to the folks in, in, in Jackson Heights and the Fran Tates of the world and uh, Historic Belmont Heights and the, and the neighborhood associations for their input and the jazzy, the jazzy seniors. I, you know, the, they were out there in force, you know, advocating for their wants, needs, and desires. On the name change, I, I just want to remind everybody that we do have uh, this coming up on the April 4th agenda uh, to discuss this. Currently, we uh, to, to give you some solace, we have a, a moratorium on changing names. So as best I could tell, it's called Fair Oaks right now. And then until somebody changes the name, it's, it's Fair Oaks. So 
I mean, at least the way I would look at that. Um, so congratulations to all. Congratulations to the community. And not just, not just the folks within immediate proximity to this park. This is going to be one of those crown jewels for the entire city of Tampa. This isn't just, this is not just an amenity for a few people that live within this area. This is going to be something that we'll be able to hold events in. It'll be a, a, a basically a community to living room for the city of Tampa. So congratulations. Council member Hurtak. Thank you. Uh, I, I really am impressed on how uh, the developers really listened to the community, even after they presented a final, they were able to change some things, uh, things that we knew were important, adding an outdoor basketball court so folks could play whether or not it, um, the rec center is open is very important. And also since that indoor basketball court is also going to be used for gymnastics, there will always be times that people will want to play. I think that's wonderful. I also loved the, com the combining of the playground and the splash pad with a fence to go around the entire area so that parents can keep an eye on their kids regardless of which part of the park they're in. I think that's wonderful. Uh, I did have a question about the 30% goal because to me a goal and a requirement are different words. So I would just, um, could you extrapolate a little bit when you say 30% goal, is that really a goal or is that going to be a requirement in EBO participation? Well, it's, it's a goal and we encourage um, and Skanska has been outstanding um, in uh, minority uh, subcontractors participating on their projects. And if they can't uh, reach the 30%, then what they'll do is use an ancillary process to uh, acquire more sub subcontractors in the project. But the goal is 30%, and we require some significant substantiation um, if that can't be reached. But we're very confident with the ancillary process and Skanska's history that we're going to meet that goal. Uh, and how will the public and council be able to follow that? We use a program called BDG Now, and we're going to require the uh, prime to enter the subcontractors payments in that system and then everyone can follow it will that be on the website that is dedicated to this park so that the public can easily find it yes it will be and we have bdg now available on our website so we're very transpar transparent in this process so, and Skanska, like I said, has been just great. So, so there will be a link on the park website. Yes. So that, that, that folks can follow along. And then just to ask, to clarify, because I know this is a question, the public will want to know, when do you expect that website to be live and or when do you expect that portion of it to be available to the public? Well, we'll get working with TNI straight away and have that available as soon as activity starts uh, in the construction. Okay, and that is predicted to be well, uh, a month from now, two months from now. Mr. Mulkey, do you have any sort of idea? Tony Mulkey, Parks and Recreation. Uh, if if uh, council advances this, we're ready to issue a notice to proceed almost immediately. Okay. And we would, we would break ground. Okay, so I'm, I know we have an approval date to be March 28th, so then I would expect by the beginning of May for that to be available for the public. I, I would hope so. We're working with Janelle McGregor from, from uh, Community um, Partnerships, and uh, she's working with a new platform that hopefully we can streamline that information uh, getting to the, the public. Okay, great. Uh, then there's only one other or a couple of other concerns that I want to bring forward. Um, obviously, I'm not talking about a name because we have a whole naming discussion that's coming up on April 4th, and I highly recommend the public come out for that discussion because it seems to be that that's something that people are going to be very passionate about, and I agree, it really should be up to the community. I am still concerned about a quarter of the building being a lobby. 
that is in, I mean, it looks like about a quarter of it. And to me, that's a lot of wasted space. And I know that like every rec center, we're, we're gonna run out of space. And so I'm hoping that there are secondary plans for filling that space with actual programming. Because to f have a quarter of the building be nothing but a lobby is not a good use of taxpayer dollars and not a good use of just space in general. Uh, also, I know that we are working on trying to separate the seniors space and I, I'm, I just want to reiterate that because it is so important. The seniors were really adamant about a separate space and because we couldn't accomplish that due to costs, we really do want them to be able to feel separate and like their space is, is not accessible to the youth. That was their goal, to just have some separation. Uh, there's gonna be wonderful things for youth all throughout the rest of the park. This was just making sure that this maintains a safe and separate space for our seniors. So uh, that's really all I wanted to say, and I, I, I commend the park is beautiful, the goals, everything. I look forward to the grand opening. I, I am just thrilled that this is coming, and I do appreciate also that uh, we were able to bring down the cost somewhat. So thank you. Thank Councilwoman Herchak, uh, just one quick response on, on some of those. We, we've heard that feedback quite a bit. Uh, we're, we plan on utilizing that space for, for a lot of different functions and being able to configure it so that the seniors definitely have their, their dedicated space. Councilmember Carlson. Mr. Chair, in regard to time, um, I have two or three minutes of comments, but then I have a bunch of questions, and so I would appreciate some leeway on that. I think the public deserves to hear answers to questions. Um, I opted not to meet privately because I wanted the answers to my questions made public so the public could hear them. Um, that just so the public knows, there are two readings of this. We passed an ordinance a few months ago that said any item above 20 million has to be heard twice, just like land use issues. And so we're not voting today. We would vote, I think you said March 28th. And so um, that is the date that we actually would vote on this. So any comments today are merely to get, to get answers to questions and to shed light on this so that the public can have transparency into this. Um, the, in, in regard to what we do on council, I represent South Tampa. There's a, uh, Vieira represents North Tampa. Uh, Miranda represents West Tampa. Henderson represents East Tampa. But we all vote on issues throughout the city. And so I spend a lot of time in East Tampa. And uh, some people appreciate us showing up in other districts and some people don't. I wanna thank um, council member uh, Henderson's aide came to a meeting at Hyde Park last night in South Tampa in my district. And I think it's, I want to thank her and her aid for doing that because it's important that we understand the issues that are going on in different parts of the city because uh, we need to be able to vote on the entire city. Um, in regard to the name change, I've always called it Fair Oaks. The administration, for some reason, changed the name in their reference to it a couple, two or three years ago. That was not a decision of city council. Um, uh, we can debate the charter about whether city council can change it unilaterally or not, but I've always called it Fair Oaks, and I'll continue to do that. Um, my aide is here, and I would like to, there's been a lot of spin, some of it by agents of the contractors um, who have put out misinformation about this in the public and, and misinformation in particular about, about um, my involvement in this project. Could you put that? I've got three articles that I'd like to pass out to my colleagues. These are all, there's a thing here, <clears throat> right here. The first article is, um, maybe you could just show the front of the article. The article is from uh, the Tampa Times 2019, December. And if you, <clears throat> if you go back, we had, as people in the public said, members of the public, when I first started just a few months before this, they came almost every week asking us to do something about Fair Oaks Park. And so um, we, uh, we as a CRA board, city council sitting as a CRA board, and you can read this quote at the top, we, we set up a public meeting. It was not the administration's city council did it sitting as the CRA. Um, and then you see a quote by me, Councilmember Bill Carlson agreed that residents should be fully consulted about any proposed changes. And it says that, uh, that although I represent South Tampa, I thought that East Tampa should be uh, uh, communicated with. And then as former Councilmember Citro said, the three, three of us, Goods, Citro, and I went to the meeting. Could you switch to the next page, please? Um, I made a motion for 200,000 at the CRA board, which CRA agreed to, 
uh, without any other estimates. Keep in mind that the prior mayor had turned down twice 375,000 to renovate it, and the and the and uh, Mayor Castor also had turned down uh, or rejected ideas of renovating the building. And so I made a motion for 200,000. And then we held the, the meeting, the public meeting. And in the in the meeting, the public clearly came, and you can see the video linked to this Times article. The public uh, came and said, "We don't want it to be renovated." The mayor presented a video. Um, it's uh, that said that um, it said before Souter spoke from the Parks Department, Mayor Jane Castor, who was at a national mayor's conference, uh, promised to fast track repairs in a brief video message in which she acknowledged that the park had fallen through the cracks. Uh, so city council had made it the, the initiative to hold a meeting, set up some money, and the administration said, we're going to renovate it. The, the, you can watch the video. The public booed uh, several people who are here today, including uh, Bishop Patty, were there the day and um, were criti critical of the administration for not moving forward. So we asked, uh, CRA board asked the Parks Department how much it would cost, and they said maybe in the $3.5 million range. And then it says here the day after the meeting, after this public meeting, where the public clearly said they wanted a new meeting, Castro's spokeswoman Ashley Bauman confirmed that the mayor remains in favor of renovation, not a new center. That was just about building a new building, not even building a new park. And so we continue to push and it said on the, on the next page, Carlson says he's in favor of, and remember I represent South Tampa, but I said I'm in favor of a new building. And several of us started pushing for four to $5 million. I think it's the only fair and equitable thing to do. We have to contribute what we can to right this wrong, and the community is asking for a new building. The next article <clears throat> is that the mayor, uh, after stalling and stalling for a few months, came back and proposed 18 million. And uh, if you look at the quote of me in this article, it says, Council Mayor Bill Carlson has kept the center's plight on city council's radar with near constant references to it being made uh, to, the, to, the, to the rodent infestation. Um, and it says that the administration denied that, although they found one. The question here for East Tampa community is- Wait, Council Member <clears throat> Carlson, your time is up. If there is I no make, objection- I think a motion to extend continue. Council yeah. Carlson's time. Give them two more minutes. I use like two minutes. Yeah. I'm going to ask some questions, which may take more than two minutes. I, I, I have to say, I would, I would not be with that time to two minutes. I would just guess, just whatever yeah. needs to. All right, questions. finish it up then. Go the, ahead. The next two slides, which will end my narrative, um, the public was never asked. We know we have needs in all the parks in East Tampa, and the public was never asked. Do you think we should spend fifty or hundred million on one park versus the rest of the parks? Do you have that map? So, there are people that don't live near this park and would like to have their parks. Uh, done. This will be the most expensive park ever. The city did not ask other parks in East Tampa. It's not about East Tampa versus somewhere else. It's about should we have renovated many parks or just do one. And the next slide was presented last week by the staff at the housing thing. We know we're at least 26,000 units short in, in affordable housing, and the public is saying that they want affordable housing. Spending $100 million on a park uh, without it, we didn't, the city did not ask the public whether they wanted to spend it on housing or on a park. Um, so my questions. Um, I will ask the, the staff, um, what's the total cost of this project today? You uh, bought some land, Penny Saver, Skanska was paid for design. This is only approval for $37 million, but that's not the entire cost that has been spent today. By the end of this $37 million, how much total would the city have spent on this? Uh, sorry, good morning, Council. Dennis Rahero, Chief Financial Officer. Uh, if I could... Uh, Back up, of course, the, uh, the item being asked for approval today is the contract associated with construction, 34-ish million dollars. As we've discussed in the past, and as is in the capital improvement plan, the uh, appropriated amount is a little over $41 million. What we've also discussed in the past, and I have the detail for you today, are the interest costs associated with this park should council decide to issue debt. Again, we're not asking council to issue debt today. Could you just, before they cut me off, sorry, oh, no, <laughs> could, you, could you just tell me how much, have, how much have we spent to date on it before we approve the amount today, uh, including okay. land acquisition, Skanska, Oh, just actual everything. spent. Yeah, what have we spent I, I, today? I apologize, uh, but I will remind council that a reimbursement resolution was approved to allow us to, to spend funding. Okay. About three and a half million dollars has been spent to date. And that includes the acquisition of land and all the consultants in design today? Yes, sir. And so that what would be including this amount that we approved today, what's the total amount then? We approve it at the end of the month, not today. Well, right. when, when and if council approves this item, the total will be uh, the 41 million dollar plus that's in the budget right now yeah and just for the public's sake i want to keep in mind originally i had proposed two hundred thousand. 
Then we raised it to three and a half to five million. Then the mayor stepped in and said 18 million. Uh, we cannot find from the clerk's office that city council ever approved the 18. We did not approve the 41. Um, and we don't know how much this will cost in the future. How much is the bonding on 40? How much of it will be bonded and how much are the, is the interest on it? Conservative estimate right now about $28 million. So and all, all told, and I think this is, this is probably where the question will lead is, what is, what is the anticipated total cost for this project? It'll be about $70 million at the end of the 30-year bond period. And are you bonding all 41 or just part of it? Just the overwhelming majority of 30, about $35 million we anticipate. For, and that's 30 bond. years bonds, right? Yes, sir. And then um, how much will the increase O&M be on this park over a 20 or 30-year period? Or you could tell me annually if you want. That's operation uh, I, and maintenance. I do not have that, but Mr. Malky has that. Tony Malky, Parks and Recreation. Uh, Estimates at this point for the um, uh, operations and maintenance of the site are, are approximately 700000 How much is it today? Is that net of what we're paying today or is that? That's what we're paying today, correct. That's, and then what's the increase with all the new facilities, oh, including the, the, personnel and maintenance, everything? The increase is uh, approximately $1.6 million. That's it, in a, so it'll be $2 million total? Uh, just under, just under on that. Okay, okay so correct. So 1.5, what's the difference then? 1.3 million is the difference. So that times 30 years is about 40 million, plus or minus 35 or 40 million. So it's a, it's a decision. There are multiple fact that you said 70 something million is interest and principal, plus um, uh, for 35, 40 million on O&M increase. And again, I'm not making a judgment on whether it's worth it or not. It's just that we're, we're not making a, uh, $34 million decision, we're making a $100 million decision when we meet on March 28th. And, and again, uh, hopefully this will be helpful. Councilwoman Hurtak and I discussed this in, in our briefing. Uh, I'm, a, I'm a visual learner, and uh, <laughs> rather than throwing a bunch of numbers uh, at but you. But in addition to that, zero. then, we add the O&M, which is one, one point three or $4 uh, a million per million year. Just a little year, and then, and then, we're, and then the increase of it. Uh, over 30 years will be at like another 30 or 40 million. So it adds up to about 100 million total. Um, Yo, I'm sorry, y'all can see this, right? Yes, sir. Oh, okay, thank you. As I recall, the most expensive park we've ever built to date is Julian Lane. It was something like 32? 36. 36. Yeah, I've got 36 uh, just off the top of my head. And, um, and that was not bonded, right? That came from grants and other things. Um, and then do you, do you know, um, I know that there was an RFQ, but did anyone do an RFP for the construction on this? And which department handled it? Did the department handle it? Did uh, contract administration handle it? Did purchasing handle it? Who handled it? And was there an RIP where there were other bidders? Do we, how do we know that 34.5 million is a good price? An RFQ typically means that you're, you're showing your qualifications and the, the uh, per unit rate, but you're not showing the total cost. So how do we know that we couldn't have gotten a better cost? And what department handled that? Mr. Baird, can you answer uh, Brad Baird, uh, Deputy Administrator of Infrastructure. Uh, this was handled by the Contract Administration Department with an RFQ. But an RFP was not held. And were there, were there any other bids uh, put out that were similar to this in, in, with the entire price, or was it just an RFQ on, on unit costs? It was, it was an RFQ for, for the project, for the entire project, uh, design build. And um, I forget how many teams we had submit. Eight, eight teams submitted. Um, we shortlisted those. And what then, were the what were the closest prices uh, to thirty four point five million? So so an RFQ is based on qualifications. It's not right. It's, it's That's not, what I was saying earlier. So there was no RFP. We don't have all we had is qualifications. We never had an RFP to see if thirty four point five million was a good price or not. That is right. correct. Okay. However, um, the teams do bid put out bid packages with their sub contractors and subconsultants. So as I understand the way these design build contracts are held, uh, uh, the contractor gets a percentage plus they hire uh, subs. Um, and Correct. if, as I read in the contract, they're negotiating the deals with the subs. Are they allowed to take uh, per percentages or commissions from the sub or mark it up? Or are they, do they have to take it at cost? Yeah, they have a, um, they have a fee and general conditions um, that are uh, tacked on top of the uh, subcontractor prices and, and then self perform work. And then in the, in the new rules for contract administration uh, that you and, um, and contract administration worked on, there's a new rule um, to stop the, the Hannah Avenue workaround that says that if a budget goes above 50% increase, that it has to be put out for RP again. Um, this obviously was 
you could say originally 5 million, then 18 million. Um, now it's more than 50% above 18 million. Uh, was it, was, there was no RFP held no. following that rule, correct? The estimate in the RFQ was a 40 to $60 million range. And um, actually, uh, as part of Skanska's presentation, they guaranteed they would come in with a, a GMP under 35 million. They have done that. So um, with GMP, it means that they're guaranteeing maximum price. Correct. But in other cases like Hannah Avenue, it kept going up, up, up because they can, there's a, a, a section of the contract that allows for change orders. What guarantee does the public have that this is not gonna cost 50 or 60 million in addition to interest in O&M and everything else? That's exactly what a guarantee maximum price is. But they can still change it with a change order, correct? Only if, if the city agrees to. All right, any, how much longer do you need, Councilman Carlson? Um, Hey, give me one second. Um, Council Member Henderson has yet. And then, and then on minority co participation, the feedback I've gotten is that 30% is very low. And we talked about minority participation. Why is it not higher? And also, how much of the 30% is black owned businesses versus just uh, you know, other minorities? And that'll be the last question. Correct, Can I just sir? ask one more? And, then. and that'll be the last question. Thank you. Um, uh, based on our 30% uh, goal set, 10% are black owned businesses and 20% are small local businesses. Okay, so last question, uh, and this is a question just because we get this because of projects like Hannah Avenue and others um, have, sorry, I have to ask this because the public keeps asking, have any staff or city officials disclosed a conflict of interest or any personal or family connections to this uh, vendor or this project? And if so, what or whom? Yeah, great. Uh, Brad Beard, Deputy Administrator of Infrastructure, not to my knowledge. Thank you. Thank you very much. Council Member Henderson. Good morning. Thank you so much. I'm so glad I had a chance to listen to everyone else speak, uh, considering that this project is in my district. I am um, first wanting to say congratulations for all the hard work um, on both behalf of staff as well as Skanska that has gone into this project. Thank you to the community. The input was extremely uh, well thought out. Their input has been uh, taken into consideration and not only taken into consideration, but actually implemented into the design that is before us. Even the one, my, one of my first meetings, um, one of our residents was concerned about bird poop on benches, and some of the benches are actually covered because of that. The um, Jazzy Seniors, they wanted separate rooms um, so that if someone's line dancing, they can still play cards. So they put up the partitions, but yet it's also very important to have an open space so when they wanna have larger events, they have room to do that. The basketball court, the kids didn't want the basketball court outside. But when it came to council and the adults came in the room, they complained about that. And so, but I want to be clear, the kids did not want a basketball court outside. But we put one there anyway because you're right, it is important. After hours when the center is closed, they can play basketball outside. So that will benefit them and they will see that that is a very, very good benefit. Um, the lobby, the lobby, this is a 32,000 square foot building, correct? 34, 34, 34. 34,000 square foot building. The lobby has a wonderful opportunity to also be an event space. It's not just the lobby. Um, the recreation leaders who also, I believe Skanska said to me, we wish we would have talked to the workers first. That's like talking to teachers. We actually have the answers. Um, they were able to give some very, very valuable input in terms of sight line and how that area is built so that they have a safety measures in place because they can see every aspect of that 34,000 square foot building. So the input has been there. In terms of the money, um, Mr. Herrera, can you come back to the podium real quick so we can just clear this up? I don't want to go over too much history that it was a three-acre park and then it went to a 10-acre park uh, because you can go back and look at tapes. I, I don't want to waste my time talking about that. But we bond a lot of things, right? Yes, ma'am. What do we bond? Just just give the for, – for entertainment and just for record, 
Tell the folks some of the things that we bond in this city. Uh, whew, what don't we bond? We bond uh, pipes, of course, uh, mm -hmm. for water, wastewater. We, we bond stormwater projects. We bond plant work out at the water and wastewater plants. Now, do they are, cost over $40 million sometimes? Yes, ma'am. Okay, they thank do. you. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough information on that. So we bond things, and we do it for long-term reasons. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, and everybody pays for it, even our children. So there's really nothing wrong with that. That's a philosophy that we have. Maybe we should have a workshop on bonding in the future. The one thing, and this is the first time that I'm being bold enough to say this, is that the Fair Oaks Park, the bottom line is we can get to four votes. We can get to four so that we can get started on Fair Oaks because it is overdue. We've been waiting a long time. The community has been waiting. The time is here. The time is now. The, the park is going to be bonded. It's going to be a beautiful park. And in the history probably of the United States, a big, beautiful $40 million park is going to be built in a black community. That's just the bottom line. Whether you like it or not, previous history, what was said, what wasn't said, all of that kind of stuff, the bottom line is, is that we're going to have a $40 million park, and we welcome everyone. We welcome everyone to that area, but it is going to be in a predominantly black community, and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Maybe you can dig in Resolution 568 and find a very good reason why that 10 acre, 10.2 acre park can be built in that area. As far as Fair Oaks is concerned, I was kind of thinking about that from the standpoint, you know, I'm a West Side girl, and I grew up going to Riverfront Park. New folks say Julian B. Lane, and I had issue with that as well. I was like, why has it got to be named Julian B. Lane at Riverfront? But Julian B. Lane was a mayor. He instituted buying the um, acreage um, over there on the riverfront. You know, he did some decent things for black folks back in the day at a time when, you know, people weren't really thinking about us. And so, um, and he, you know, he was just a good public servant, Hillsborough graduate, University of Florida. He was a mayor. And so they instituted naming the park after him, along with keeping the word riverfront. Now, the East Tampa Recreation Complex is just a general name. It's not like it's representing some mayor. Oh, I'm going to need a few minutes. Go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. It's not like it is, um, you know, a name of a mayor who has done some amazing things over in this area. It just happens to be that this particular mayor was bold enough to say, we want to improve this park, and the design is actually bigger than what we initially thought. And there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. Absolutely nothing wrong with it. So I am just really proud of um, all the work from our staff that has gone into this. We've talked about the money part and why we bond and how much it costs. And this part just happened to cost $41 million and it happens to be going to be built in a black community. Now, if you don't like that, that is not something that I actually care about at this point. I wore a button today that says teach the children the truth, teach the children the truth so our kids, when that park is built, they can say, the community can say, this is what it was and this is what it now is. And I just want to thank a few people who came before us today, um, Carrie Hurst, Verlene, um, Drayton, Johnny Johnson, Fred Hearns, Joe Citro, Bishop Michelle B. Patty, and Eileen Henderson who stood up today and so boldly spoke on behalf of this particular project. You are right in every aspect of everything that you said. As the new council member for District 5, it is my honor and privilege to support you on this project. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you very much. That concludes the discussion, <laughs> sir. That concludes, we have a chance to vote on it. Later on, we can ask our questions and debate it then, but we are in recess until 1.30. Thank you very much. Thank you.